Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto reincarnation of Byakuya and Bleach. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Piercing Cage Kitsune and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Prologue On the border of Fire Country on October 10, two Anbu guards were on their second day of their two-week north side border patrol mission, they were both about six foot and had on a standard black long-sleeve armored plated shirt along with matching pants, armor plated black gloves and black cloak with a monkey and snake porcelain mask to hide their identity. Hey Seru. Said the Anbu with a snake mask, what is it now Hebe, Seru said with a sigh. It's just that I'm so damn bored and it's only 7M Seru. Hebe screamed, with Anaim style tears pouring from his eyes, but you couldn't see them because of the snake mask. Seru just stood there with his eyebrow twitching madly, and his forehead covered in Anaim style tick marks, Hebe you do know you're standing a foot away from me, which means that you just screamed right into my ear. Seru growled out dangerously oh ha 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 sorry about that, Hebe laughed out embarrassedly, while scratching the back of his head, Seru just sighed at his friend's childish behavior. So Hebe how about a game of Carby oomm? That's when heard a huge explosion and saw the dust cloud it created a few miles away from where they were, what the hell was that Seru? You think I know Hebe? Then out of nowhere an intense wave of killing intent like nothing they ever felt before hit them, then they heard it, an unearthly bone chilling roar come from the dust cloud the explosion brought, when they both took out their binoculars to get a better look, the thing they saw sent away the fear and a chill up their spine. SS is that really T? Yes it is Hebe it's the Kyubi no Kitsune, stated Seru just barely under a whisper. Seru it's headed right to us, which means it's probably headed for the village. Hebe stop panicking. Just summon a messenger bird and give a scroll stating the situation, since it can reach Kanoha quicker than us. Right s, stuttered out Hebe fearfully. Are you done yet Hebe, because that fox is only about two miles away from us, which means we got to go now. Screamed out a slightly panicked Seru. Just about finished. Exclaimed Hebe, as he sent the bird with the scroll attached to its foot to the Yondium Hokage. Well then, let's get the hell out of here. Sarah yelled as they both disappeared into the dense woods of Fire Country. At Kanoha Hospital 7 p.m., this is all your fault Minato. Screamed a feisty redhead with green eyes again, for the fifth time, while she was laying in a hospital bed for the last three hours in labor, but this time the redhead decided to get physical by sitting up and start strangling her husband like a rag doll, while shouting you just had to want a kid, over and over again. Ashina chan I can't breathe and wasn't it your idea to have a kid, choked out the fourth hokage as he was turning blue from lack of oxygen while being throttled by his pissed off wife. Don't change the subject. She yelled while finally leading go of him by throwing him against a wall to his left just a few inches from the door. I'm finally free now all I have to do is take deep breaths in and out, thought Minato, ha huh, much better, the Hokage said, as he stood up, he was about 5'11 with messy blonde hair and piercing blue eyes, wearing a standard jounin outfit which was a long-sleeved navy blue shirt with matching pants, brown vest, Kanoha headband on his forehead, and ninja-style sandals, along with his with custom white trench coat with flames at bottom. Oh Minato-kun, Kishina called out in a sing-song voice that made him start sweating. That's when two people came in, one with long white spiky hair and a ponytail, grey pants, grey kimono top, red vest, wooden sandals, red triangles going from the bottom of his eyes to a little past halfway down his cheek, and a headband on his forehead with a kanji for oil, standing at 6'1 or 6'2 and around late 30s. The other one had gravity-defying spiky silver hair with a navy blue mask, starting from the base of his neck to halfway past his nose, with a leaf headband covering his left eye, and was wearing the same jounin outfit as Minato, except no white trench coat with flames at the bottom, he was also about 5'7 and 15 or 16 years old. The he looks like I'm saved, thought Minato, as he looked at his sensei and student with an evil grin. When Kakashi, who was the younger and shorter one, and Jiraiya, taller and older one, seen Minato grinning evilly at them, they started sweating and backing up, while getting ready to make a break for it, not wanting to know what kind of crazy and psychotic plans their hokage has in store for them, but they were too slow, and Minato caught both of them by their collars. Ah Jiraiya and Kakashi just the two I wanted for this special mission. Jiraiya and Kakashi turned around after hearing that, while looking at Minato curiously. So what's the mission Brad, said the semi-deep voice of Jiraiya. Yes what is the mission sensei, called the board voice, of one had a Kakashi. Well, you two both know that there have been both S ranked, and even a handful of SS ranked missions correct, said Minato, looking at his two friends seriously, they both just raised an eyebrow at him and nodded, well, I'm giving both of you the chance to make history, by assigning you both the first SSS ranked mission ever in all of the great ninja villages. At this news both Jureya and Kakashi's eyes were wide as saucers as they thought, I'll go down in history. 
thought Kakashi. I'll become even more famous and beautiful women love famous guys, thought Jiraiya while blushing and giggling perversely. So what's the mission? Both asked excitedly. You both understand that this mission is harder than anything you've ever done before, when they both nodded, Minato thought one thing while laughing manically inside high head suckers. The mission is tossed with Kishin until I get back, to stay with Kishina until I get back, said Minato, in a rushed voice as he rushed out of the room using Hiroshin no Jutsu. A few seconds after Minato left, they finally figured out what Minato said, and at the same time both shouted damn you Minato. Oh boys, Kishina said, in that eerily sweet voice that made Kakashi and Jiraiya sweet profusely. Yeah as I, Kakashi stuttered out. Oh nothing just could you two come over here for a sec, asked Kishina while smiling. When they were standing where she said she grabbed both of them by their neck and started chalking them while swinging them around and shouting where is Minato. They both yelled simultaneously. We don't know. Over and over again. Ah safe at last, sighed Minato, what's this? He thought as a messenger bird landed on his shoulder dotty, then took the message and began reading. Okajama this is from Hibi and Seru, North Side Border Patrol team, you must prepare the village for battle because the Kaiubi is coming and will be there by midnight. Oh no, Minato thought, as his eyes were wide open with fear etched all over his face. I must hurry, it's already 8 o'clock which gives me and the village only 4 hours to prepare, and I already know what I must do, and I'm sorry my son, but this creature cannot be defeated only sealed, thought Minato sadly, but then his resolve was hardened as he thought, I'm the Hokage first and a father second, and so to protect this village, I will have to seal the fox spirit inside you and seal away your bloodline trait from your mother's side, because with that power you could become a threat to the village, since you are the first 7th generation member of the Kachiki clan, which means you have powers far beyond the normal person, and so if the fox corrupts you the village won't stand a chance against you, so I have no choice but to seal your powers away, thought the Yandium Hokage with steely resolve. I know what a bastard. Well PM outside Kano has walls. The Kaiubi breaking through our defenses we need the fourth Hokage now, A-R-G-G-H-H. -H. Screamed some random Chunin, right before he was hit with a blast of Kaiubi's pure chakra with another two Chunin and one Jounin, which vaporized them instantly. Hospital 12:10 PM. No Minato I won't let you do this to our son. Shouted out a hysterical Kishina, as Minato was trying to take his son Naruto away to prepare for the ceiling. When Minato finally took Naruto away from Kishina, while Jiraiya held her down she yelled out, I hope you burn in the Shinigami's stomach for all eternity Minato Namikas, you traitor. That was the last thing the Yandium Hokage heard his wife say to him, and it brought him to tears knowing his wife resented him so much right now. I'm sorry Kishina and Naruto, he said looking down at his son. Are you sure this is the only way Minato, said an elderly man with black battle ready pants and long sleeve shirt, with metal guards on his forearm and a helmet with the Kanoha symbol on it. Yes it is Sandame Sama, answered the fourth, the third side and said, very well then, let's get started. Hi replied the Yandian. Ashina was crying while she was lying in her bed too exhausted to move, but she knew why, she knew she was exhausted because she was dying from the complications caused during childbirth. Minato you fool I don't despise you right now because you're going to seal the fox spirit into our son, but because you're taking away his birthright as bloodline ability, and since he is the last of my clan, if you seal it away, the clan will be lost the most powerful clan will truly be lost forever wait. The Kaiubi can help me. The Kachiki are direct descendants of the fox spirit. So if I concentrate I should be able to establish a mental link with him, since he is close I got it. Outside Kano has walls 12.40 pm, the Yandium arrived at the battlefield standing on top of the boss toad Gamabunta's head. Foolish human what can you do? Against me Kayubi no Kitsune, king of all demons. Hey ah hey ah hey. I can do this Shikai few and no Jutsu. The Yandium yelled as he summoned the Shinigami and began sealing the fox spirit into the crying blue-eyed, blonde-haired, and now whiskered-cheeked baby boy. Am you Yandim Hokage. Shouted out the Kayubi as the last of its soul was sealed away into Naruto. After the ceiling Gamabunta puffed away in a cloud of smoke and the fourth Hokage landed on the ground with Naruto tightly in his grasp, that's when all the ninja left on the battlefield including the third Hokage and Jiraiya came to see if the fourth Hokage was all right. but when they got there everyone heard him say one thing as he handed the baby to Suratobi the third Hokage, treat Naruto Uzumaki as a hero because he is the reason you are still alive today. The Yandium Hokage said before he fell to the ground motionless. That's when all the ninja rushed to their fallen hero's side to see what was the matter, except for Saratobi and Jiraiya, because they already knew the price of the jutsu that he used and just stood there looking between Naruto and their fallen hero, with a sand expression on their face. Naruto's mind scape. Ashina woke in a sower with dim lights on the ceiling, where my Kishina thought as she got up and rubbed her head. This must be where Kaiubi-sama was sealed, but I wonder where he is Humra. Who is there? 
Kashina heard a thunderous roar, and along with the question coming from the hallway to her left, and like any person followed the path she heard the roar came from until she came to a cage with a giant red fox, with nine tails thrashing around a giant cage with a kanji for seal on the middle of the cage. Ayubi-sama, I request your help. Kashina shouted trying to get the fox's attention. A human like you asks me for a favor, ha 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 ha. Why should I help you? Shouted the nine-tailed fox agitated that a mere human would dare ask him for a favor. This is why Kaiubi-sama, Kishina said, as she pulled the right side of her silver hospital gown down past a little less, then halfway past her right breast, reveling a small black fox tattoo on her chest, signifying her status as a Kachiki clan member and her relationship to the nine-tailed fox. That mark. But I thought that clan was destroyed about 50 years ago, along with Whirlpool Country by the Haki Madano Arachi, eight-tailed snake, Kaiubi said with a shocked expression. My mother was the last survivor and gave birth to me about 25 years later and died when I was only 16 teen, leaving me as the only survivor, but before she died, she told me about my clan and how powerful my child would be, since he would be the seventh generation, but I died during childbirth and used what little chakra I had left to create an anchoring point in my son's body so my soul wouldn't move on. Wait a minute then that means we are in your son's body, which means I'm sealed in one of my own descendants. Kaiubi said in a calm voice, now that he was settled down and with a huge foxy grin, only he could pull of as he realized what he could do being sealed inside of his own descendant's body, being sealed inside his own flesh and blood. He is also the first seventh generation Kachiki to be born, and as you know Kaiubi-sama the seventh generation is said to hold the purest form of the clan's bloodline, as well as the purest form of your blood. Kashina said pointing to Kaiubi at the end. Then that means he has my blood pure fox demand blood flowing through his veins, if I activate that dormant blood he will turn into a fox demon, with the potential to take my place as the next nine-tailed fox demon, since I'm sealed away if he is properly trained. Kaiubi said, in an exited and shocked voice at this child's potential. Correct Kaiubi-sama now we have 5 years and 364 days before the suppression seal on Naruto becomes permanent and his powers are locked away forever, so shall we get started on figuring out how to break it Kaiubi-sama, said Kashina with a grin, from thinking of how powerful her son will become when they remove the seal. Yes, let the return of the Kuchki clan begin. Yelled out the demon lord. Council Chambers 1.30 AM The council was in an uproar because of the constant yelling and arguing about one Naruto Uzumaki, at least they thought that was his last name. No we will not kill the child, but we will honor the Yandium's last wish. The Sandame Hokage yelled out to the civilian part of the council, nor will he be made into a weapon Danzo, the third Hokage said, with cold eyes and steely resolve. If I may Hokage-sama. Yes what is it hiashi san said the Hokage, looking at a man in his late twenties, wearing a grey and white kimono with long black hair and pale pupil-less eyes. I just wanted to propose we make it an S-class secret about the child's condition and that we make it punishable by death if his condition is ever spoken openly or to those that don't know of it. Stated Hiashi in his emotionless voice. You all heard what Hiashi said, now that will be the law concerning Naruto Uzumaki for now on dismissed. The old Hokage shouted before he got up and left leaving the council shouting protests while they glared daggers at Hiashi for coming up with the law, all Hiashi did was smirk and say, did I do something wrong, as he looked at the council before he to got up and left. End of prologue. This chapter was just supposed to give a strong background to the story, so you would have a good understanding of what happens in latter chapters. The pairing for this fanfic will be an Naruto x Mocha from Rosario plus Vampire x One More Girl you will have to vote for with the choices at the bottom. Just put your vote in a review or go to my profile to review and it'll add up both the votes from reviews and ones on my profile for the final count at the end of the voting. The voting will end at the third or fourth chapter. If you never seen Rosario plus Vampire then it'll only tell you she's a vampire for now and if you have seen the show then you should know there will be a few things different about her in my fic but nothing too drastic so you will just have to wait to find out about her when I bring her in. Damari, Denton, Hanada, Ujido, Nibi Jinchiriki, Themgara, Heiya, 504, Chapter 1, A Brother Found. So here's Chapter 2 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Though all those that reviewed last Chapter 1 appreciate and I also changed the story summary, so tell me if you like it better than the first summary or if I should put the other summary back up. So here's Chapter 2 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Demon Suman speaking, person thinling flashback, it was October 10, the five-year anniversary of the death of the Kaiubi no Kitsune by the Leaf Village's hero, the Yandium Hokage, as well as little Naruto Uzumaki's fifth birthday today, but fortunately for Naruto, he doesn't have to worry about anything more than the usual ice-cold glares or whispers directed at him, because on his first birthday, Achunin attempted to finish what the Yandium started, and the Hokage made an example out of him. Flashback, it's time to finish what the Yandium started demon. 
said the crazed Chunin, as he obviously gone mad from the crazy look in his as he eyed the child. Right when he was about to finish the one-year-old Naruto off the third Hokage came rushing in because of the strange chakra signature coming from Naruto's room in the Hokage's building. The next day in the middle of the village of beaten and obviously tortured Chunin sat with the Hokage standing over him. Now people of Konoha this Chunin attempted to kill one Naruto Uzumaki, the child the Yandium Hokage asked you all to treat as a hero, and now to make sure this never happens again. The Hokage paused for a moment to steal his resolve for what he was about to do, I will now show you all the consequences for attacking the hero of this village. The Hokage yelled as he publicly executed the Chunin, and with that, a collection of gasps were heard in the village as everyone witnessed their old and kind Hokage execute one of the village's ninja. Now if anyone else ever harms this child or treats him unjustly, you will be dealt with severely, said the aged Hokage with ice-cold eyes, and since that day, no one ever dared to harm Naruto or treat him wrongly for fear of their Hokage's wrath and opted for just giving Naruto ice-cold glares whenever they saw him or just avoiding him, along with keeping their children away from him. And flashback, Naruto was walking through the village today wearing his signature orange jumpsuit with blue on the top part of it, with his blonde hair messier than ever, and blue eyes looking around to take in the scenery. He was headed to see the Hokage because he asked Naruto a day ago to come see him for a birthday present. Excuse me Kaya-chan, but could I go and see the Hokage, Naruto asked the secretary who was a teenage girl about 18 or 19 with a nice figure, light blue long hair, green eyes, about 5'7", and had at least small C-cup breasts. Aya just smiled at Naruto from across her desk and said, of course can Naruto come. Naruto just smiled a big foxy grin at her while saying thanks Kaya-chan. It's no big deal Naruto-kun and you can go see the Hokage now if you want to, answered Kaya while smiling back at Naruto. But he stopped at the door when he heard voices coming from the room and D put his ear to the door so he could hear them better. Inside the Hokage's office, Inu said the Saratobi to a dog mask Anbu Inu, are you sure you're correct about this little group you told me about, asked the Hokage, hi Hokage-sama, the whispers I've heard from the villagers and Ninja confirms my suspicions about what might happen to the Yandium's legacy tonight, the old Hokage just sighed while leaning back into his large comfortable chair. Very well then Inu what I want you to do is take Yugao as your partner and watch over him until tomorrow, and if anyone does attack him, you are to kill them, because I will not have people walk over me and my laws, thinking that there is no consequence understood. Inu bowed and nodded before disappearing into the shadows, while well knowing that he was in for one long night. When the Anbu left the Hokage just sighed, before smirking and looking at the door while well saying I know you're there Naruto, so you might as well come on out now. Naruto opened the door and looked at the Hokage while laughing and scratching his head embarrassedly at being caught. Oji-san what did you get me? Naruto practically shouted at the Hokage while jumping up and down excitedly while running up to the Hokage's desk. Hey ah hey calm down Naruto and I'll tell you what I got you. Laughed out the Hokage. As Naruto calmed down and took a seat in one of the chairs, the Hokage was about to start talking until Naruto fell to the ground clutching his stomach in pain while lightly crying and biting his tongue so he wouldn't start screaming. Inside the seal, why didn't it work Kayubi sama Yelled out a panicking Kashina, wearing a plain blue kimono with Sakura petals covering it and looking the same as she did when she was still alive, except for her hair that turned pink after the first year for some reason, Kashina just considered it a side effect of being inside of Naruto. Um, I'm curious as to why it didn't work as well Kashina. Do you think we could have missed something important on the suppression seal, Kayubi sama Asked an irked Kashina. No we did everything right unless, Kaiubi said, as he went back to examine the seal again. And just as I thought ha you just had to make it difficult Yandium g g g g r r r r r r r r r r r r r thought the Kaiubi with a sigh then a light growl at the end. Kashina noticed the fox's frustrated expression and asked, is there something wrong Kaiubi sama It would seem that I have figured out the problem. Oh, and what is it? It would seem that for us to be able to break the seal it will have to be weakened, and for that to happen, Naruto must subconsciously call on his bloodline during a situation where he thinks his life is in danger, answered Kaiubi. Ashina just raised an eyebrow at that while asking, and how are we supposed to do that Kaiubi-sama? Don't tell me you forgot what the child heard the Hokage and the Anbu member talking about, Kaiubi answered with a sly grin to his friend. As realization of what Kaiubi was saying hit Kashina, a sly smile of her own came onto her face as she said, so all we have to do is to get Naruto to run into the mob that's after him, and then we just sit back and wait for his basic survival instincts to kick in and let it try to awaken Naruto's bloodline, and while the seal is being weakened because of that we can add the extra push and finally break the seal. Precisely Kashina but until that time comes we will just sit back and wait patiently. Kashina nodded and walked off into Naruto's mindscape looking for something to occupy herself with until Kaiubi and her were ready to break the seal. Back with Naruto and the Hokage. Naruto are you okay? 
the third Hokage shouted with a worried expression as he rushed to the small child's side, but his expression quickly changed to one of horror and confusion as he seen the seal on Naruto's stomach turning red and pulsing from a small area of where Naruto's shirt lifted up from when he fell off the chair. When the seal stated to go back to normal, Naruto started to feel better and got up while asking the third Hokage, what happened to me just now Oji-san, the Hokage just frowned while thinking, I'm wondering the same thing Naruto. I don't know Naruto, but whatever it was it seems to have passed now how about we get back to what I got you for your birthday. Said Suratobi, with a smile at the end. Naruto couldn't help but smile at that, as well as start jumping up and down while yelling excitedly, what did you get me? The Hokage just chuckled while saying, settle down Naruto, and as Naruto settled down, the Hokage continued, so Naruto first off I enrolled you into the Ninja Academy, got your own apartment, and this, said the Hokage, handing Naruto a check for, to make this easy, I'm going to use US money, $1000. Now Naruto, for now on I will be putting a weekly allowance of $600 into your savings account that I created for you, at the National Ninja Bank, as well as pay the monthly bill for the apartment, so you won't have to worry about doing that, said the Hokage while lighting his pipe. Naruto's eyes lit up at the idea of finally getting out of the orphanage, even though the matrons weren't exactly mean to him they weren't nice either, just opting to ignore him most of the time, and sometimes blamed him for things other children did, and wouldn't give him dinner as a punishment, and he could never understand why the men other people would treat him differently from other children, along with the ice-cold stares here and there, then Naruto's face took on a look of curiosity as he looked at the Hokage, and thought. Why did Oji-san give me a thousand dollars, when he said I would get an allowance of six hundred? I see you're wondering why I gave you a thousand dollars, instead of the six hundred dollars like I said earlier correct, the aged Hokage asked with a grin, while well, Naruto could only nod while wondering how he knew. Well Naruto, I gave you the extra money as part of your birthday present for you to be able to buy whatever you want, but remember you still need to buy food and other essentials now, so don't waste the money okay, answered the Hokage, while well, Naruto just nodded for an answer while smiling a big foxy grin. Naruto's mind scape. Um Kayubi-sama what kind of an idiot gives a five-year-old boy an apartment, then tells him to live on his own? Kishina asked Kayubi with her eye twitching furiously. Kayubi just sweat dropped at such a blunt question while saying, I have new idea Kishina. Back with Naruto. Oh I almost forgot here's where the apartment is located Naruto, and also a letter for you that I received in the mail, stating it was to be given to you, and because of the blood seal on it, only you can open it. Said the Hokage while thinking I wonder who that letter really is from. As Naruto took the letter and paper with the location and key of his new apartment on it, he waved a goodbye to the Hokage as he left the room and walked off to find his new apartment home. When Naruto finally got to his apartment building he saw he was in a nice upper middle class area. 2001, 202, 203, ah 204 here we go. Said Naruto as he found his new apartment and opened up the door. When he got in and turned the lights on he saw it was a nice sized one bedroom apartment with a kitchen and a table in the middle, living room with a couch and 40 inches flat screen TV, courtesy of the Hokage with a coffee table in front of the couch, a nice sized bathroom, and a large bedroom with a dresser and a 32 inches TV on a stand on the wall in front of the bed. Wow this is a really nice place, and it's all minya. Naruto shouted in excitement at the end. Um so I should probably look at that letter now. Mumbled Naruto as he took a seat on the couch and opened the letter. Hello Naruto, I would like to meet you today at 530 over by training ground 7 to give you your birthday present as well as tell you something that you should find very interesting. I wonder who it's from and if I should go. Thought Naruto out loud. Well it's already 5, so I guess I might as well get going so I can meet this guy. Said Naruto as he left his apartment. As Naruto walked through the streets he noticed the villagers giving him weird looks not the normal ice cold glares, but a grin that just screamed they had something bad planned for him, and it was really starting to creep him out, so he just walked faster. Man is this guy going to show or what I mean I've already been looking around here for about 10 minutes. Naruto whined while walking around training ground 7 until someone grabbed his shoulder while saying hello Naruto in an eerily emotionless voice and made Naruto jump from the suddenness. When Naruto turned around he saw a 13-year-old boy in an Anbu uniform with bangs on the sides of his face and black eyes. God are you? Naruto stuttered out to this new person. My name is Itachi Ichiha and I am your older brother. Stated Itachi with a brief pause. Naruto was so shocked after hearing this he just stood there gaping at his supposed older brother, and after getting over the shock, some he was able to stutter out. How? Let me explain, two weeks ago I saw you and for some reason my gut said we were related, so I snuck up behind you and knocked you out with this and took a blood sample. Itachi said while holding up a large stick while Naruto sweat dropped in thought so that's why I woke up in the forest at night two weeks ago, and where the hell did he get that stick from? Was it really necessary to knock me out when you could have just asked for a blood sample? Asked Naruto. Now where would the fun in that be asked Itachi smirking, while Naruto just sweat dropped with his eye twitching. 
Now back to what we were talking about Naruto the blood sample I gave to the hospital, confirmed we had the same mother but different fathers after a week's worth of tests with your blood sample I gave them and the blood sample they took from me. So after that I confronted my father for some answers and found out. Flashback, father, I have recently found out that I have another little brother and his name is Naruto Uzumaki, care to explain Itachi said to his father in a deathly cold voice in their living room at around midnight. I have no idea what you're talking about Itachi. Answered Fugaku, Ichiha with a small grin. At that Itachi activated his Sharingan and quicker than the eye could see pined his father to the wall while saying tell me everything. Well my son to put it simply a woman by the name of Kishina Kachiki came to this VILLAGE 13 years ago under the alias of Kishina Uzumaki, but I knew who she really was and knew of her powerful bloodline. So I got her drunk and performed a powerful sleeping Jinjutsu on her and then took one of her eggs and implanted it into my wife Makoto while she too was under a powerful sleeping Jinjutsu and later on she became pregnant with you and everyone thought it was hers when it was really Kishina Kachiki's child. My wife Makoto was just a way to carry you while you were developing in her womb. Yugaku finished with an insane look in his eyes. But for some reason her bloodline and the Kachiki bloodline didn't fuse like I hoped, Yugaku said with a sigh, but as you grew I found out that you may not have received the Kachiki bloodline, but your Ichiha bloodline was stronger than normal, so I decided that my little experiment wasn't a complete failure, Yugaku said with a grin. So why didn't you do the same with Sasuke then? Asked Itachi with actual curiosity behind his voice. Yugaku just frowned while saying, I would have but she was involved with the fourth Hokage and doing something like that again to the fourth Hokage's girl would have been suicide. Then what happened to mine and Naruto's mother? Asked Itachi while applying more pressure to his father's throat. She died giving birth to Naruto because of complications during childbirth, Yugaku answered with a grunt. I see, said Itachi, as he threw his father to the opposite wall and saying, you truly are a despicable human being father, while walking out of the room afterwards. And flashback, so we're half brothers, and our mother was Kashina Kachiki, the last member of some forgotten clan with an unknown but powerful bloodline, and my father was the Yondium, and I have some unknown bloodline, and you basically have a super powered version of the Achiha bloodline, said Naruto in an awed voice, because of knowing his parents were dead, but he was still happy knowing he has an older brother now, and all Itachi did during the summary of what he just said was not in confirmation. As Naruto looked up at Itachi while wiping the stray tears away, he said, So nice, and what do we do now? Well little brother we get to know each better, said Itachi, as he kneeled down and gave Naruto an unexpected hug. Not used to physical contact Naruto stiffened at first, but eventually felt comfortable and relaxed into high big brother's embrace. But their little moment was interrupted when Itachi sensed someone in the tress behind them giving out killer intent, Itachi stood up and said Naruto get behind me now who's ever there come out now. After Itachi said that eight people came out of the trees. So three civilians, two Chunin, two Ichihajounin, and one Anbu. So what are you all doing here? Asked Itachi as he looked his possible opponents over. Well Itachi, said the Anbu removing his face and revealing Shisui, said Itachi with slightly widened eyes. Yes Itachi, it's me now step aside so we can finish off that demon like your father Fugaku-sama asked us to. Well I cannot let you do that my friend, said Itachi preparing himself for a fight. I was afraid you'd say something like that, said Shisui with a sigh. So in that case you two Jounin are with me to help take down Itachi and the rest of you kill the demon shouted Shisui, with his Sharingan activated along with his other two Ichiha allies as they rushed Itachi and the rest rushed Naruto. Chapter 2, Awakening of a Prince. Now here's Chapter 2 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Demon Suman speaking, person thinking flashback, run Naruto, I'll handle them. Itachi said, while looking at Naruto. But nice and, just run Naruto. Itachi yelled at Naruto, okay. Yelled Naruto, as he took off. Bet him. Yelled out Shisui, I don't think so yelled out Itachi as he drew his katana and rushed the two chunin and three civilians, but his katana was intercepted by Shisui's. You're not going anywhere Itachi, said Shisui with an evil smirk. Where the hell are Naruto's Anbu guards when you need them? Thought Itachi with a growl. But the Anbu, you just had to fall asleep while watching Naruto when I left you alone to get some lunch Kakashi. Yuga yelled angrily, with a tick mark appearing on her head as she and Inu were looking around the village for Naruto. What can I say, it was just time for my afternoon nap, Kakashi said with a shrug, while Yugao just sweat dropped at his casual attitude. But Naruto, we're gaining on you demon, and when we catch you we're going to kill you. Yelled out one of the chunin, as he threw kunai at Naruto and got him in the shoulder, earning him a scream of pain from Naruto. Inside the seal, just one more push Kashina, and the seal will be weak enough for us to destroy it. Kaiubi shouted to Kashina with a grin, while she just stood there thinking soon my son, you will regain your birthright. 
but the Tachi, Dragon Fire Jutsu, shouted Shisui as he blasted Itachi, but found out that Iz was just a shadow clone, but then he quickly turned around because of hearing his two comrades' cries of pain, as one was stabbed through the stomach by Itachi's sword, and the other one's head was rolling on the grass just coming to a stop. So now it's just you and me, huh Itachi, said Shisui with a smirk. Hi, my old friend, said Itachi, as they rushed each other Itachi with his sword and Shisui with his kunai. As Itachi swung his sword straight down, Shisui stepped to the side and let out a fireball jutsu that Itachi dodged by replacing himself with a shadow clone and appearing on the left side of Shisui while giving him a right hook which sent him tumbling four yards across the training ground and stopping when he hit a tree with a crunch and a scream. I am sorry my friend, but for attempting to murder Naruto Uzumaki, my little brother I will V to kill you now, Itachi said in an emotionless voice, yet with a hint of sadness too, because he knew he was going to kill his best friend, but stopped suddenly as he felt an enormous burst of chakra coming from where Naruto and the others ran off to, and when Itachi and Shisui turned around they saw a pillar of swirling unnatural red chakra, filled with malice and bloodlust, but it was being countered by a calm and powerful yet also unnatural ghostly white chakra. But the Anbu, well it looks like we found Naruto, stated Kakashi with an eye smile, but you couldn't see it because of his Anbu mask. No shit smart ass, I bet us and the rest of the elemental countries just found Naruto. Replied Yugao, with an annoyed expression and a tick mark on her forehead, but couldn't be seen because of her Anbu cat mask. But Naruto, I got you now fox. Yelled out a Chunin, as he tackled Naruto to the ground. Let me go. Yelled out Naruto, as he thrashed around wildly, while the Chunin lifted him up by the collar, while the other Chunin and three civilians crowded around him to watch the Chunin finish off Naruto. Well Fox it looks like this is the end for you, so tell the devil hello for me when you meet him. Yelled out the Chunin, as he started to thrust a kunai into Naruto's heart, while all Naruto was thinking was I don't want to die. Inside the seal, now Kashina, well his will to live is the strongest, the seal is at its weakest, so we must flood the seal with our chakra now. Yelled out Kaiubi in a rushed, panicked, and exited voice. But Naruto, when the kunai was less than an inch away from piercing Naruto's heart, a pulse of chakra erupted from him sending the Chunin and his comrades tumbling at least three yards away, the chakra that came from Naruto became column of spiraling malicious and bloodlusting red chakra, along with calm and controlled ghostly white chakra that seemed to be fighting for dominance, and the only thing the people that just tried to murder Naruto could do was sit back and watch this incredible phenomenon. Inside the seal, where am I, Naruto said groggily, as he woke up in a grassy field, filled with cherry trees and the sun shining brightly in a cloudless sky. You're in your mindscape Naruto, said a young woman with green eyes, pink hair, wearing a blue kimono with cherry blossoms covering it, sea cup breasts, and standing about 5'10". Who are you, and what do you mean we're in my mindscape? Asked Naruto with a confused expression. What she means Naruto is that we are inside of your mind, and in your mind time stops in the outside world, but we do have limited time here, so let's hurry shall we dot stated a horse-sized nine-tailed fox that just appeared out of nowhere behind Naruto, making him jump and then fall flat on his butt from the shock. So we were right Kaiubi sama when we thought that we would probably become Zanbacto spirits for Naruto, which would mean you're free from the seal, stated Kashina with her arms crossed, eyes closed, and nodding sagely. Well more or less, considering I may be free of the seal and have more space and better scenery, but now I'm even more connected to Naruto than I was before the same goes for you as well Kishina. Said Kaiubi with a grin, well Kishina just shrugged while saying well it's not like I was going anywhere anyway. So true, stated Kaiubi, while lightly laughing. What the hell is going on here? Shouted Naruto, getting annoyed at obviously being left out of the loop. Oh sorry, I forgot you were there for a second Brad, responded Kaiubi, while laughing nervously, which only made Naruto sweat drop, while Kishina screamed out watch your language young man, making Naruto and Kaiubi wince at the volume. Now Brad, listen carefully because I'm going to explain everything to you once, and I don't like repeating myself, nor do I like being interrupted, so if you interrupt me or ask me to repeat myself, I will start gnawing on your leg with these extremely large and sharp teeth of mine understand. Whatever you say crazy mutated bunny, Naruto said, with a salute, and after he said that a brief pause started in between the three, until Kishina broke out laughing and rolling around the grass, while screaming for give me Kaiubi sama but ts just to funny. And Kaiubi started shouting I am not a mutated bunny I am a fox you a di ought. After everyone calmed down, Kaiubi got everyone's attention by coughing. Now as I was saying, Naruto five years ago I the Kaiubi no Kitsune the strongest and most fabulous and elegant and excuse me Kaiubi sama, but aren't you getting off topic, Kishina asked, while sweat dropping. Oh yes, sorry about that Kaiubi said embarrassedly. 
Now as I was saying, I attacked Kanoha five years ago as you know, but that damn Yandium didn't kill me, he only sealed me into his own son, and the son of the women behind you just minutes after you were born, said Kaiubi, making Naruto's eyes slightly widen as he turned around and looked at his mother while saying barely over a whisper you're my Kasan, but how Itachi Nai sent said our mother died giving birth to me. That's right Naruto, I'm your Kasan, Kishina said, while kneeling down and giving Naruto a hug, as he started crying from happiness at finally being able to meet his Kasan. After a few seconds though Kishina pulled Naruto away a little, while saying with an eyebrow raised and a curious look what do you mean your brother told you that your mother was dead, since I only had you Naruto. That's when Naruto told her what Itachi told him, and when he was done Kishina was thinking. Must kill Fugaku Ichiha but, then she smirked while saying to Naruto, the reason your brother Itachi doesn't have your bloodline, is because the Kachiki bloodline can't mix with another bloodline, so when a Kachiki has a child with someone that has a bloodline, the child will not get the Kachiki bloodline, but the bloodline ability the child receives from his non-Kachiki parent, will be significantly increased in power. But don't ask me why Naruto that's just how our bloodline works, said Kashina, while Naruto just stood there and listened before saying, Kasan, how did you get inside of me? Before Kishina could answer Kaiubi interrupted. No more interruptions. Shouted Kaiubi, getting the other two occupants' attention. Now back to what I was saying, but not only did he seal me into you, he sealed away your birthright your bloodline limit, the bloodline limit of the Kachiki clan, because since you are a 7th generation member, you have the potential to access the hidden abilities of the clan, giving you power far beyond a normal human, and since the Yandium feared that you would possibly be corrupted by me, he sealed those powers in order to protect the village he loved more than his wife and newborn son away. Said Kaiubi. So I have a bloodline, but my two cents sealed it away because he cared about the village more than me and sealed the Kaiubi into me and village hates for holding it. Growled out Naruto. That's right Naruto, your father betrayed both of us the moment he took you from me and sealed your powers away and I hate him for doing it, said Kishina. Okay people, our time is growing short, so let's wrap this up, so Naruto I and your mother have been trying to break the seal on you for the last 5 years, because within 6 years the seal would have become permanent, and today we succeeded, said Kaiubi, with a grin, only he could pull off. But not only did we break the seal, but since you are a direct descendant of me, I was able to activate the dormant fox demon blood inside of you, making you a fox demon, but not just any fox demon, since you are related to me, you will take my place as leader of the fox clan, prince of demons, and when you get all nine tails of power you will be the king of all demons, but until that time you are going to be training, because you're not going to be all powerful just like that understood, said Kaiubi, with a stern expression. But if I become a demon won't that make me evil and prove the villagers were right about me all this time? Asked Naruto, in a sad voice with his head down and his bangs covering his eyes. Fuck the villagers Naruto. Screamed Kishina, just because you're going to become a demon doesn't mean you're going to be evil, it's all your decision, and whatever you decide to be or do I and Kaiubi will be behind you 100%. Said Kishina, with a smile at the end. Naruto nodded to his mother thankfully, while turning back to Kaiubi and asking so what's next? Well we see which one of our names you can hear, and before you ask, Kaiubi is only my title not my name, and Kishina is your Ka-san's middle name, because for some reason she liked using it more than her first name, so don't ask why because I don't know, said Kaiubi, with a shrug. Why do I need to know your names? Asked Naruto curiously. Brat we only got about 5 minutes left, so let me make this quick, Kaiubi said with a sigh. Your bloodline has many abilities and not just one, but I'm only explaining two of them right now and only the parts that you need to know, so the reason you need to know our names is to be able to call upon the true power of the swords that represent your soul. said Kaiubi, after a slight pause. Damn it, we're almost out of time so just tell us whose name you can hear brat, Kaiubi said, with a growl while Naruto just nodded. Okay listen carefully my name is said Kaiubi, what was that I couldn't hear it, said Naruto. It seems you aren't ready to hear my name, so I guess you're up Kishina, said Kaiubi. Well maybe you can hear mine son, said Kishina as she bent down and whispered into his ear. So could you hear it, asked Kishina, while smiling. Hi, Ka-san I could hear it. Stated Naruto excitedly, figures he could hear her name, said Kaiubi, while rolling his eyes. So, for now you will only have the sword that represents your mother, until you can hear my name kid, oh and before I forget with the seal broken, and your transformation into a demon you are going to look different, and have a different personality along with not being as stupid, oh one more thing about the other ability that you have, it is a dejutsu that gives you the ability to wield the released form of your sword effectively, but you will only have one of the four tomes for now at least, and it will let you see things in slow motion as well as give your body the ability to keep up with your eyes, and the more tome the more abilities which I and your Ka-san will explain what they can do as you get them. Now this is where we depart, said Kaiubi, while shooing Naruto away with his paw as he and Kishina began to disappear. 
Remember Naruto, call out my name to use my power, said Kashina, before she disappeared completely. I will mother, and I will restore our clan to its former greatness, and that's a promise believe it, whispered Naruto as he too began to fade from his mindscape. But the Hokage, nothing is ever allowed to be simple Hatenzo. Asked the Hokage, while he removed his pipe from his mouth with a sigh, to the Anbu standing beside him as they both witnessed along with the rest of the village, the large spiraling pillar of malicious red chakra and calm ghostly white chakra from the window. If everything was easy sir the world would just stand still because nothing interesting would ever happen, answered Tenzo in a calm and subdued voice. I suppose you're right so we might as well get going now, said Siratobi. Hi, responded Tenzo, as they both disappeared in a swirl of leaves, with their destination being the column of spiraling red and ghostly blue chakra. Unknown location, a girl looking to be around 17 or 18 with green eyes, long silky pink hair that stopped a little before her nicely shaped butt, small C-cup breasts, cute young face, with a bell-type joker around her neck with a cross-shaped rosario that has a crimson circular stone in the middle with a black slit-like pupil in it, was attached to the choker by a short chain in the middle, and wearing a short light brown miniskirt, blue unopened toned ninja sandals, white short sleeve button-up shirt with a thin long sleeve vest over it, suddenly stopped walking on the dirt path to Kumo and turned around to see a strange yet beautiful ghostly white and malicious red chakra spiraling together. That's when the rosario on her neck started glowing an eerie red, and she could hear it saying so the prince has finally awakened, in a calm feminine but little more mature voice, than the pink-haired girl herself. What do you mean the prince has finally awakened? Asked the pink-haired girl. I mean that the one destined to take Kaiubi sama's place as the next nine-tailed fox and demon king has finally awoken, and I have a strange feeling that he might be our destined mate, but we will have to check my assumption later on when he gets older, but until then let's continue what we were doing, said the voice. I wonder what he's like and if he'll finally be the one who isn't afraid of me for what I am, because I don't want to be alone anymore, whispered the pink-haired girl with a slight pause at the end. We will just have to wait and see, said the voice, before the glow around the rosario dissipated and the voice stopped completely and the pink-haired girl continued her trek to Kumo on the dirt road while thinking I can't wait to meet you. And just before she left she noticed the two chakras merging together, creating an even more spectacular sight as it became a pillar of pure pink chakra, reminding her of her hair. But Itachi, it would seem that my little brother needs me right now, so I will have to wrap this up Shisui, stated Itachi in his eerily calm voice as he raised his katana. You don't have it in yo, sated Shisui, but he didn't get to finish because of Itachi decapitating him and burned his body with a fireball jutsu, so no one would know what transpired there. So it seems that I have finally gained the Manjekyo Sharingan through killing my best friend how interesting, said Itachi, as his Sharingan changed to a three-sided pin wheel after killing Shisui, and then his eyes changed back to normal solid black eyes after he closed them and reopened them. I suppose it is time to go and help Naruto, said Itachi, as he just disappeared without even a swirl of leaves. But Naruto, what the hell's going on, said a panicked civilian. Maybe the Kaiubi is being released, shouted another panicked Chunin. Wait look it's dissipating, said a civilian, as the spiraling vortex of chakra finally began to vanish with the ghostly white chakra and the red malicious chakra merging together at the end and creating a spectacular column of pink chakra before it completely vanished. Naruto's mindscape, so the brat's chakra actually merged with my chakra, well, he definitely will be a powerful squirt when he gets older after pulling of a feat like that. What would have happened if the chakras didn't merge and your chakra took over Naruto instead Kaiubi-sama, asked Kashina, with a raised eyebrow. He would have been the craziest, most psychotic and homicidal little motherfucker you would ever meet a chip off the old block, if I do say so myself. Kaiubi said, with a big foxy grin. But since his will was too strong to be taken over, he will be even stronger than he could have been if my chakra won, since both chakras merged together his chakra which was the ghostly white made my chakra more controlled and calm which made it even more powerful, as well as make an interesting and beautiful pink chakra color that even I have never seen before. Ayubi said, with a sly and somewhat evil smile. But Naruto, as the chakra finally vanished, after about 30 seconds the three civilians and two chunin saw a white glow around what looked to be a small child, and as that did dissipated they could see Naruto, and what they saw made them gasp. Naruto was about two inches taller, but he is still small since he's only five, with a little more muscle and more of an athletic build, the same wild spiky hair, except it was black with blonde tips, and he had bangs just like Itachi, his whisker marks were more defined, two thin blue triangular markings going diagonally across his cheeks, starting at the back of his jawline to a little more, then halfway past his whisker marks, where they started to thin out into a point resembling a thin triangle. A crescent light blue matching moon was also in the middle of his forehead, slightly pointed ears, same crystal blue eyes, but now he had slightly 
slighted pupils, razor sharp claws instead of fingernails, but the same blue markings on his cheeks wrapped around his wrist, basically the same markings as Sesameru from Inayasha has, larger and sharper canines just barely short enough from poking out of his mouth, and a four and a half foot katana with a blade three and a half feet, and a held one foot with a rectangular gold guard, with one swirl design on each side, strapped to his back in a black sheath by a cloth type rope. So, I have finally awakened, said Naruto, in a voice way to calm and calculating for a five-year-old, and looking at his fist while clenching it and unclenching it to test out his new body. When he stopped doing that he looked at his opponents, with an unemotional face like Itachi, except unlike Itachi unemotional, uncaring, and indifferent eyes. His eyes held a strong, piercing, and commanding gaze with a hint of indifference, making him truly look like Itachi's little brother, especially with the same looking bangs. Now it is time for you five to die, said Naruto with a pause at the end as he drew his sword. Wh what could a BB like why possibly do to stuttered out the chunin that almost killed him earlier. I can do this, said Naruto as he held his sword in front of his face and with his arm at a 90 degree angle and his eyes closed. When Naruto opened his eyes reviling not a piercing blue color with a slighted pupil, but rather a piercing pink color with a slighted pupil, and one blue tome in each eye and seemed as if they were glowing in the night while he said now die scatter some bonsakura, and as Naruto said that a pink aura of chakra surrounded him, as the sword glowed pink as well before it scattered just like he told it to, and the only thing the attackers could think while this was happening, was how incredible the pink glow looked in the darkness of the night, the next thing they saw was a dog-sized pink fox with red eyes being created by cherry blossoms rushed them, and after that all that could be heard was the pain-filled screams of Naruto's former attackers, as they each fell to the ground dead, with hundreds of shallow and deep cuts all over their bodies, making them all almost unrecognizable. After that Naruto re-sheathed his sword over his back after it glowed pink and returned to normal again and deactivated his dejutsu still not knowing what it was called. This power it's simply amazing, is this the true power of my clan the true power of a 7th generation Kachiki clan member, because it truly is intoxicating being able to feel this much power flowing through me, Naruto said, in an odd and calm voice with slightly wide eyes while looking at his hand and clenching it and unclenching it like he did earlier, just to make sure this was all real. Why do I feel tired all of a sudden? said Naruto, in his now calm yet still slightly uncharacteristic voice, as he began falling to the ground from exhaustion, but was caught by Itachi, said Naruto, as his eyes lids began to become heavy. Hi, it's me little brother and we must leave before the Hokage and Anbu arrive, said Itachi, as he picked Naruto up bridal style, while looking at him and thinking it seems you activated your bloodline little brother and changed both physically and mentally from its activation. And those changes seem to have made you look and act a little like myself, there's no denying that we truly are brothers now thought Itachi, with a smirk. I also now know from your display of power earlier, and that Dejutsu I saw that seems to resemble the Sharingan, that you will be the one to surpass me one day Naruto, and not Sasuke, and from this point on Naruto, I will always protect you, and be there for you and like you say, that is a promise believe it. Thought Itachi with a small smile as he disappeared without even a swirl of leaves. But the Hokage and Anbu, it was about a minute or two later when the Hokage and Anbu arrived where Itachi and Naruto left from. Bakashi, Yugao you were supposed to be watching Naruto, so something like this wouldn't happen. Screamed the Sandame Hokage as he looked at the almost unrecognizable two Chunin and three civilians that were obviously dead from the hundreds of shallow and deep cuts all over their body as Yugao and Kakashi just lowered their heads in shame. That is until Kakashi seen one of the Chunin move and rushed over with the Hokage, Yugao, Tenzo, and the other four Anbu that came with the Hokage's backup following, and oddly enough it was the same Chunin that almost killed Naruto. As Kakashi kneeled down to see if he could get any information, he heard the dying Chunin say, Beware of Saku Kitsune, Blossom Fox, said the Chunin just above a whisper before he finally died. What did he say Kakashi, said the Hokage, in a somewhat frantic voice. He said Beware Saku Kitsune, said Kakashi, with a curious expression. So this wasn't Naruto, because he would have definitely have blamed this on the boy, mused the Hokage, while stroking his chin with a thoughtful expression, and lighting his pipe. Anbu, do a thorough search of the area and the village while looking are anyone suspicious. Yelled out the Hokage, while dismissing the Anbu and disappearing in a swirl of leaves like the Anbu. Little did Kakashi know, was that the name Saku Kitsune would soon be a name feared and respected across the elemental countries. End of second chapter. 504. Chapter 3, Training and Plotting. Thanks for all the positive reviews last chapter since that's obviously how I know if people are reading my story and actually like it, and if you have any questions about the story or need something explained better just put it in a review, and I'll answer it. Now here's chapter 3 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Demon Suman speaking, person thinking flashback, where am I, said Naruto, as he woke up in a plain looking room that had four light blue walls, white ceiling, hard oak wood floor, a dresser with a mirror over it, and obviously the bed that he was laying in. So you're finally awake, said a male voice. 
Come out now, said Naruto, while sitting up and reaching for his sword that was lying at the end of the bed. There is no need for that little Naruto-kun, said a smiling, navy blue long-haired woman, with pupil-less lavender eyes, about five nine small C-cup breasts, and wearing a plain yet elegant lavender kimono that showed off her curves. You are safe your Naruto, so just relax, said a man, with the same voice from earlier standing beside the women at about two or three inches taller, with the same lavender eyes, about mid-shoulder length black hair, and the same type of kimono except in a man's design. Who are you, said Naruto, in a curious voice while relaxing a bit. I am Hayuga Hiashi, and this is my wife Hayuga Hitomi, said Hiashi, while pointing to Hitomi. So I am in the Hayuga complex, but why would you let me stay in here? Asked Naruto curiously, with an eyebrow raised. I can answer that Naruto, said Itachi, coming out from the shadows, from the right-hand corner of the room. Well what's going on? Asked Naruto, again except this time it was directed to Itachi. Well little brother, you've been sleeping for 8 hours, and since we left the area where you were attacked at 7 o'clock at night, it's now 3 o'clock in the morning, and I brought you here because Hiyashi-sama is the one who proposed the law that has been protecting you the last 5 years, and I told him about everything I know, so he could understand the situation better. So if you would take it from here Hiyashi-sama, Itachi said, while looking at Hiyashi at the end. Yes of course Itachi, so Naruto I am letting you stay here because you Kasan, and yes I've known who it was, she was a very good friend to me and my wife Itomi, as well as the whole Hyuga clan general, in fact she spent most of her free time in the Hyuga clan complex, and would always tell me that my clan always reminded her of how her mother used to tell her how her clan was, except for the cursed seal that's on the branch family of course, she would always tell me that I should remove the cursed seals, but that's up to the elders and not me, since you're her son, the whole Hyuga clan has decided to help you, out of our respect of your dead Kasan. So the whole Hyuga clan knows of your situation, well at least the clan members 18 and over, since children can't say something they are not supposed to, mostly just with a little probing, and I want you to know that none of us that know hate you for even the elders agreed to help you. So you would really help me? Asked Naruto cautiously. Yes I would, for I and the rest of the clan do not care about what you are, but who you are. Do not take me for a naive fool just because of my age Hiyashi-san, because I can see in your eyes that that there is another reason for your kindness, said Naruto, while narrowing his eyes at Hiyashi. Hiyashi just frowned while saying I hoped I wouldn't have to tell you until a later time, but since you know I might as well explain, Hiyashi said with a sigh. Explain what, said Naruto, with a raised eyebrow from letting his curiosity get the best of him. Well I was curious about the similarities between your Kasan's Dejutsu and the Dejutsu of my clan the Byakugan so I flashed back. It was early morning, around 8am at the Hyuga clan compound, and Kashina was in the garden enjoying the scenery until Hello Kashina-chan, could I ask for a favor, said Hiashi, as he came into the garden. What do you need Hiashi-kun, asked Kashina, while turning around to face Hiashi. I wanted to know if you would let me run some tests on your blood to see if the similarities between our Dejutsu are just a coincidence or something else, said Hiashi, with a pause at the end. I'm sure if you really want to Hiashi, I don't see any harm in it, answered Kashina. Thank you Kashina, the test results should be back in a few days, said Hiashi, as he took a blood sample from Kashina and left. A few days later Hiashi approached Kashina again and started saying it seems that there is a connection between our two Dejutsus Kashina and it's possible that the Byakugan came from your clan's Dejutsu. Are you sure Hiashi? Asked Kashina with widened eyes. I am not positive Kashina, but there was some kind of tie between your Dejutsu and the Hyuga Dejutsu, stated Hiashi calmly and flashed back and well that's everything Naruto, said Hiashi with a sigh. So you wish to possibly find out more about my Dejutsu through me and try to find out any more similarities, said Naruto, while nodding to himself. Anyway, we must get back to more important matters, said Itachi, which got him the attention he desired. So, in one week's time the Ninja Academy will start and the Hokage will be there to give his speech to the starting students and he will expect to see Naruto there, but seeing as how Naruto has completely changed this will cause the Hokage to ask Naruto questions and become suspicious of his new look. So I have decided that I will push my plans of eradicating my clan ahead by two years, before Itachi could continue there was a loud gasp from Hitomi, and even Naruto, and Hiashi had wide eyes at such a bold declaration. But before anyone could speak Itachi held up his hand while saying, let me finish please, the reason that I am doing this is because my clan has been planning to overthrow the Hokage and take over the Leaf Village, and if that happens the ninja world will be thrown into chaos, and that is not something I can just sit back and watch while doing nothing, when I know I can stop it. 
The reason that I am moving my plans ahead two years is because of you Naruto, because I will be taking you out of this village with me for seven years to train, which will make you 12 when you come back to take the genin exams with your age group, but here's the catch. We will be making a special clone that acts and thinks exactly the same way you did before you activated your bloodline to take your place in the village, making it as if you never left, and when you do come back and replace yourself with your clone, you can say that you were hiding your true abilities and looks until you graduated which will allow you to avoid people asking you questions about your sudden changes, said Itachi, while smirking at his own devious and brilliant plan. Naruto's mindscape, he definitely is your son Kashina, because only Fox Demon could think of such devious plan, or in Itachi's case, it's because he has Fox Demon blood in him that he got from you, Kaiubi said, while smiling a foxy grin. Could you not remind me about having Itachi as my son, because it's kind of depressing finding out that I had a son when I was alive, but never even knew him, said Kashina, with a sad sigh. Very well, Kaiubi said, with a sigh of his own. Back with Naruto, I wouldn't expect anything less from my Nisan, said Naruto smirking as well, which only made Itachi's own smirk increase. So, how long will it take to make this special clone? Asked Yashi, with a raised eyebrow. It will take four days, since this is a very complicated forbidden jutsu, and I will also need this for the clone's creation, said Itachi, while plucking a few strands of hair from Naruto, while eliciting a growl from Naruto as well. So Naruto, we shall leave one week from now, and in that time you will stay here with Hiyashi, and he will be training you rigorously in chakra control, so we won't have to worry about such a simple yet time-consuming training when we leave the village. Also you will be helping me with the extermination of the Ichiha clan, because seeing as I am two years ahead of schedule, I am also two years behind training, and I am not arrogant enough where I think I could do this alone, said Itachi, with an apologetic smile towards Naruto. But Itachi, I am not skilled enough yet to go against seasoned ninja, said Naruto, with a sigh and a grimace. Don't worry Naruto, I will handle the ninja, and you just handle the civilians or any weak chunin with that interesting sword of yours, while I handle the rest, and the reason I need you to do this Naruto, is so I do not become overwhelmed by sheer numbers, said Itachi with a sigh. So, can I count on your help little brother, said Itachi again while looking Naruto in the eyes. But the sigh Naruto said of course you can Nisan. Thank you little brother, but it seems that I should be going before people get suspicious about my whereabouts so, I will be back for you in one week Naruto, because we can't afford someone seeing me come to the Hyuga complex, so we must lay low, and you are not allowed to leave this complex Naruto, just in case people start asking you questions, said Itachi, while gaining a nod from Naruto, before he disappeared into the shadows again. So, I suggest you go back to sleep Naruto, because it's 3 am, and at 8 am, is when I will be training you in chakra control, and we will be keeping you a secret from the younger generation of the clan, so do not allow any of the children to see you, said Hiashi, as he and his wife left the room to get back to sleep themselves, and Naruto did the same. Two days later, congratulations Naruto, for completing the tree walking exercise, and in only two days that's very impressive, and quite a feat, praised Hiashi, as Naruto finally mastered tree walking. So, what's the next exercise Hiyashi-san? Asked Naruto. Water walking, replied Hiyashi. Then let's get started, answered Naruto, and that's how the next five days went, with Hiyashi teaching Naruto advanced chakra control in secret, and on the fifth day he mastered tree climbing, water walking, and kunai balancing, while leaving Hiyashi to think this kid really is a prodigy among prodigies, to be able to learn so quickly truly is amazing. Day 6. Since I was only instructed to teach you chakra control there is nothing else I can teach you, since you basically mastered all the chakra exercises I showed you so I would suggest you use today and tomorrow morning to sharpen whatever skills you possess, because tomorrow night is when you leave and help Itachi with eradicating his clan, said Hiyashi. But the pause as he left Naruto alone in his private training ground, where he wouldn't have to to worry about anyone finding him. I guess it would be wise to train with you Sanbonsakura, 1000 cherry blossoms, said Naruto, as he held Sanbonsakura in front of his face, while preparing to activate its power. Remember Naruto to activate your Dejutsu O, oh, and by the way it's called the Sakugan, Blossom I, said Kashina, in Naruto's head. Since when could you talk to me through telepathy Kasan? Asked Naruto a little stunned. Me and Kaiubi sama just figured out how to a couple of days ago, Kashina said shrugging. Oh, and talk to me through your thoughts when people are around so people won't think you're completely insane, said Kashina again. Very well, so what is it you want Kasan, answered Naruto by thinking. Well, I want to show you how to control Sanbonsakura better, answered Kashina. What is it you would like to teach Kasan? Asked Naruto, while closing his eyes and reopening them to reveal incredible pink-colored eyes, with one sky-blue tome in each. Now activate Sanbonsakura Naruto, stated Kashina. 
Naruto took a calming breath before saying Scatterson Bonsakura, and as he said that his sword glowed a light pink, and then scattered, but then he felt as if the gravity in the area double if not triple, which caused him to kneel down, and send Bonsakura to go back to normal as well as the gravity, letting Naruto stand up again with his sword still in his right hand while panting heavily. What the hell was that? Stated Naruto, through deep breaths. That my son was spiritual pressure or the Kachiki clan's version of killer intent and chakra that ninja use, but as you felt firsthand spiritual pressure is much stronger and much more dangerous, because if the wielder of the spiritual pressure is not used to it, it will affect the wielder as much if not more so than the opponent, stated Kashina, with a serious voice. Is there any way I can stop it from activating, and why didn't it affect me the last time I used Sinbonsakura? Asked Naruto. Well last time you were just so caught up in the moment you didn't even notice. So before I tell you how to get used to your own spiritual pressure, I will have to explain it to you, because you will never be able to wield it properly if you don't understand it, so spiritual pressure will always be released when you either release your sword's true form, or you release it yourself, and the stronger you become the more spiritual pressure you will be able to release, and spiritual pressure is just basically your own chakra, but much denser, and stronger than normal chakra, and the density of it is, where you get the increased pressure from which lead to our clan, calling our unique type of chakra spiritual pressure instead of well, calling it chakra, said Kashina, smiling at the end. So how do I learn to control it, Kasan, asked Naruto. Listen son, to master spiritual pressure takes months which at the quickest, and one to three years at the most, so to put it simply, there's no way in hell you can master it, or even come close to mastering it from now till evening tomorrow, stated Kashina, bluntly while frowning. In that case I am curious at how long it took you to master your spiritual pressure Kasan, asked Naruto, with a raised eyebrow. It only took your Ka San nine months, said Kashina, within a superior and confident voice. I see so in that case I plan to master spiritual pressure in six months, said Naruto, with a confident smirk. We'll see my son will see so anyway since you will need your sword's released form, I will teach you how to use just the bare minimum spiritual pressure needed to activate Sinbonsakura, where it won't severely hurt you like before, but still be painful to use if you can't control it, stated Kashina sternly. So shall we get started Ka San? Asked Naruto. I now remember concentrate and release only a little bit of your spiritual pressure, stated Kashina, as Naruto put his sword in front of his face, while concentrating on releasing just a little bit of his spiritual pressure, and when he thought he had enough he activated his Sakugan and said Scatterson Bonsakura, and to his relief, the spiritual pressure he released was enough to make him feel uncomfortable, and made it slightly difficult for him to move, but it was nowhere near as bad as before, so as Sinbonsakura was released, he could see the cherry blossom surrounding him, and blowing in the wind around him just waiting for him to command them through his thoughts, then he called Sanbonsakura back to its normal form as a sword and resheathed it. Very good Naruto, now we will be practicing like this until sundown, which will be when you go to sleep, and then you will wake up at sunrise, and practice more in doing what we are doing now, until you can withstand the little bit of spiritual pressure you are releasing now, so you better train hard because we stop training tomorrow evening, and when you're done helping Itachi destroy the Ichiha clan, you are not allowed to use Sanbonsakura until further notice, said Kashina. What but why not Kasan? Asked Naruto with wide eyes. Because Naruto, your body is too young and underdeveloped to use your spiritual pressure excessively, because you can seriously harm yourself permanently if you do use it, that is why I and Kaiubi sama will be training you in a strict physical training program, as well as Itachi probably will, and when you're at an adequate physical level, and your body has developed to an also adequate degree, I will start your training and your spiritual pressure, and also increase your knowledge of Sanbonsakura's powers, but from now till you leave this village will be the last times you can use Sanbonsakura's true form, said Kashin in a serious voice again. Very well Kasan, said Naruto. With a sigh. But then let's get started again, stated Kashina again. A7 7.30pm, are you ready to go little brother? Asked Itachi to Naruto. Hi Nai San, and I would like to thank you Hiyashi San, for all your help and teachings over the past week. Said Naruto, after turning around to face Hiyashi. Think nothing of it, just come and visit when you get back, said Hiyashi, with a small smile. Of course, said Naruto, as he nodded his head. If that is all, we will be going now, said Itachi, as he put his hand on Naruto's shoulder and disappeared. Your boy is going to become something great one day Kashina, said Hiashi with a smirk. Ichiha District 820. I need to hurry, or Tusan and Kasan will be angry that I'm late, said a young five-year-old Sasuke Ichiha as he ran home from the park. So that's Sasuke, your other little brother, said a small figure, on the roof of a building with pink-colored eyes, and one blue tome in each that just seemed to glow an eerie pink in the darkness off the night. Yes it is, said a larger figure, with red and three black tome in each eye, that also seemed to glow an eerie red. 
buys it so quite it's not time for everyone to be in bed yet, said Sasuke, as he slowed down his pace and to look around, and that's when he seen it bodies dead bodies of his fellow Ichiha littering the dirt road. Going on. Said Sasuke, with a horrified expression, and tears forming at the sides of his eyes. No, what about Tusan and Kasan? Said Sasuke, in a worried voice as he took of running for home. When he finally got home he went inside and opened the door to his parents' room, and what he saw made him scream as loud as he could, his Kasan and Tusan weary on the floor seemingly dead. So little brother you are finally here, said the eerily calm voice of Itachi. Nisan who did this? Shouted Sasuke in a panicked voice, but he went silent as Itachi threw a shuriken at him faster than he could see, and it grazed his arm, making him wince and grab the area that was cut with his other arm. I did this little brother, said Itachi, in his a calm voice. But why why did you kill Tusan, Kasan, and the rest of the clan, screamed Sasuke. Don't worry Sasuke, Kasan is only knocked unconscious, and as for the reason why I did it was simply to test my limits, and it seems I have done just that, stated Itachi as he activated Tsukiyomi on Sasuke, making him witness the death of the clan firsthand for 72 hours straight, and when it was over Sasuke didn't even have the energy to scream. Now little brother, when you pauses the same eyes as me come after me so we can see who is truly stronger, because like me, you pauses the unique ability needed to activate the Manjekyo Sharingan, but know this, to obtain the same eyes as me, you will have to kill your best, said Itachi, as he disappeared, making Sasuke's eyes widen. When Itachi disappeared all Sasuke could do was crawl to his mother's side finding comfort in knowing that his Ka-san was still alive before he blacked out. North Gates, didn't you go a little overboard on Sasuke Itachi Nisan, asked Naruto, while frowning at his big brother's ruthlessness. It had to be convincing Naruto, said Itachi, in a calm and unemotional face, yet Naruto could see the few tears falling from Itachi's eyes, showing that he was truly saddened by what he did and that's where Naruto decided to drop the subject. Come here Naruto, and get on my back because you will only slow me down, said Itachi, while kneeling down so Naruto could climb on. Very well Itachi Nisan, said Naruto, as he climbed on his big brother's back. Are you ready Naruto, asked Itachi, and when he got a nod from Naruto Itachi was about to take off but stopped when. You remembered to put my clone in my apartment right Nisan? Asked Naruto, with a raised eyebrow. Of course, and with that said, Itachi and Naruto disappeared into the dense woods that made up fire country. Morning 6.30. Were there any survivors Inu, asked the Hokage. There are two sir, the clan head's wife and his son Sasuke, who are in the hospital right now recovering from severe mental strain, I'm guessing a powerful Jinjutsu, but as for Itachi, he's now were to be found, said the dog mask Anbu. You can't find him because he's the one that did it, stated the Hokage. Hokage-sama come quick, yelled out an Anbu. When the Hokage arrived to the scene he saw the exact same thing he saw a week ago, which was dead bodies littered with hundreds of shallow and deep cuts. So it would seem Itachi had the help of the same person that killed those two Chunin and three civilians last week, but it seems that only the Achiha civilians and Lo to Mid Chunin were killed by this mysterious second person, this mysterious Aku Kitsune, said the aged Hokage, while lighting his pipe. So Hokage-sama what should we do, asked Inu. We will put Itachi in the bingo book with as a S-ranked missing ninja with $1 million reward, and we will put down the little information we have on his accomplice's power, and mark him down as an A-ranked criminal of the leaf, said the Hokage, with a hard expression as he dismissed Inu, and thought just who are you really Saku Kitsune. End of chapter. 504. Chapter 4, Alone Again. Thanks for the reviews for last chapter everyone. Now here's chapter 4 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Demon Suman speaking, person thinking flashback, it's been a day since Itachi and Naruto left the leaf village, and they were out getting breakfast seeing as it was 8am. So nice and what what do we do now? Said Naruto, in between bites oh his sweet dumplings. Well first we get you new clothes because no brother of mine will be wearing such an eyesore, said Itachi, as he looked at Naruto's orange and blue jumpsuit with a slight frown. I have wanted a change of clothes anyway, said Naruto, while briefly looking at his attire. But there is one problem, said Itachi, while taking a stick of Pocky out of his sleeve and start eating, which only made Naruto wonder where the hell he got it from. So what's the problem? Asked Naruto. The problem is I forgot to take any money with me, said Itachi, while blushing a little from embarrassment. Before Naruto could reply he heard his Ka-san's voice. Do you really think I left you with nothing my son go to the National Bank of Whirlpool Naruto? But Ka-san wasn't Whirlpool destroyed? Asked Naruto, with an eyebrow raised. Just because Whirlpool was destroyed doesn't mean that the chain of banks it had were destroyed, since there was only one bank in Whirlpool, and the rest were around the country, the bank was still able to continue operating, and that means the Kachiki clan fortune that the bank held is still there, which means you inherit it all, since you're the last of the clan, said Kashina smirking the whole time. So were you talking to Kaiubi or Kasan just now Naruto? Asked Itachi, Naruto told Itachi everything when they left Konoha. 
I was talking to Ka-san, and it seems she has an idea that will help fix our money problems Nai-san, said Naruto smirking, while he got of his chair and started walking away while Itachi looked at him quizzically before getting off his chair too and following, and after about 5 minutes of walking, Itachi finally asked, little brother where are we going? Asked Itachi. We are going to a bank and seems that we have finally arrived, said Naruto, as he stopped walking which made Itachi do the same, while he looked at the name of the bank and read out loud National Bank of Whirlpool, before looking at Naruto with an eyebrow raised as they both walked into the bank. So how may I help you, asked an average-sized man standing behind the counter to Naruto. I would like to make a withdrawal from the Kachiki clan savings, said Naruto. Sorry, but that clan's been gone for the last 50 years, so I can't just believe you're from it without some proof like maybe you could show me the clan's fabled Sakugan Dejutsu, said the clerk, well smirking because he thought that this kid was just pulling his leg and trying to get some money that is until he saw what Naruto did next, and it made him go pale. Very well since that is understandable, said Naruto, as his eyes turned once again into that brilliant pink collar, with one blue tome in each eye that was the Sakugan. You really are from that clan, said the clerk, just above a whisper with wide eyes and still ghostly pale. Yes I am and so is my older brother that's standing right beside me, but for reasons I'm not going to disclose to you, he doesn't pauses the bloodline like I do, said Naruto. I see, well I'll be sure to tell the bank's owner that the Kachiki clan has returned, so the computer says that there is 2 billion dollars in your checkings account and 10 billion in your savings account, so how much would two like to take out Kachiki-sama? At hearing what the clerk said, Naruto and Itachi's eyes both widened considerably, and when they got over their shock and their faces went back to normal, they both had identical smirks that would make anyone that looked at them in that moment know that they are brothers. So it seems little brother that you are financially fit for the rest of your life, said Itachi, while actually smiling a little instead of just smirking like he would normally do. Don't you mean we are both financially fit Nisan? Asked Naruto. No Naruto because even though we may both be from the Kachiki clan, I was still born in Achiha with the Achiha bloodline and not the Kachiki bloodline, so only you can pass down the Kachiki bloodline, whereas I can only pass down the Achiha bloodline, said Itachi frowning a little. Okay then how about you just open your own account and I transfer 2 billion dollars to it so we both have our own money? Said Naruto smiling a little. That just may be do able, said Itachi with a small smile of his own. So when Itachi and Naruto were about to tell the clerk what to do he said already done so all you have to do is sign here and I can activate your account on Itachi Achiha, said Itachi. Ah yes Itachi-san, said the clerk as he handed Itachi the papers that he needed to sign to open an account, and he handed Naruto papers to sign as well to authorize such a large money transfer, as well as papers that he needed to sign to reactivate the Kachiki account solely under his control. So now that that's done could I take a picture of you Kachiki-sama? Asked the clerk. Naruto only looked at him quizzically while saying what for, so I can show the owner of the bank what the new Kachiki clan air looks like and also give it to the newspaper, because a live Kachiki hasn't been seen in the last 50 years and the clan was rumored to be the strongest, so this could make the news story of the century, not to mention being a part of that clan, makes you a noble. This will also help you as well since powerful people like daimyos and nobles will want to meet you and become friends with you, said the clerk in an exited and rushed voice. Normally I would say no to such publicity, but this could help me in restoring my clan's name to being famous like it used to be, thought Naruto, before he said very well. After that Naruto and Itachi left the bank after Naruto let the clerk take his picture. Well they left Itachi left with a new checkbook covered in black ravens and Naruto left with a checkbook covered in red foxes, since that was the only color they had foxes in. So we're off to the clothes store Nisan? Asked Naruto. Yes we are and it was pretty fortunate for us to find out that you're actually loaded, said Itachi, and before Naruto could reply Itachi said we're here. They arrived at a small shop yet although small it was nice and elegant, and its name was the Gold Clothes Store, and just like name said the outside of the store was painted in a gold color. So this should work, said Naruto as Itachi and himself walked into the store. So how may I help you, asked the young girl that just came out of the back. I would like four more outfits just like the ones I'm wearing, stated Itachi, while pointing to his Anbu uniform. And I would like this, said Naruto handing the girl a paper with the specifications for his new outfit. Wow that's a nice design kid, said the girl with a whistle, and you should come back in two days to get your clothes, she said again before disappearing into the back of the shop. So what do we do now Nisan? Asked Naruto, as they left the shop. Well first we should find a nice secluded clearing and start training well look at that I just made a rhyme, said Itachi, while grinning at his accomplishment, which only made Naruto have sweat drop on the back of his head, while he said let's just find somewhere to train, with a sigh. 30 minutes later, Naruto and Itachi were in a clearing on the outskirts of town. So Naruto, I'm going to explain to you your training regiment for the next four years. 
for the next two years we will be working on speed, strength and stealth and the year after that we will be training in a fighting style, and since you told me that your Dejutsu lets you see in slow motion as well as giving your body the ability to keep up with your eyes, and the little Hiashi told me about your eyes being able to see chakra points, I've decided that you will be learning a combination of the High Uga Gentle Fist and Mito Guy's Iron Fist using the scrolls that I stole I mean generously given to me by Hiashi Sama and Mito Guy, the year after that I will show you how to properly use that sword of yours by teaching you the most advanced Ichiha sword style that I know as well as teach you some techniques here and there, said Itachi. So what's the name of the sword style? Asked Naruto. Itachi just smirked while saying the Ichiha call it fox style as a way to honor the nine-tiled fox's power. Then it really must be the perfect kinjutsu style for me, said Naruto smirking as well. Yes it is so as I said we will be working on speed, strength, and stealth, so put these chakra weights on your legs and wrists and don't take them off until I tell you to, said Itachi as he threw two pars of chakra weights at Naruto. Now that you have them on start running laps around the field, said Itachi, as Naruto just sighed and started running after putting enough chakra in the weights to make the ones on his legs 20 pounds each and the ones on his arms 10 pounds each, and as he started running, he could off sworn he heard Itachi start laughing manically, but as he turned around he only saw Itachi with his normal, plain, and neutral look so Naruto just sighed and started running again. As Naruto started running again Itachi just smirked before sitting under a tree and eating another stick of Paki he pulled from his sleeve. Two days later, hello is anyone here, said Naruto as he walked into the gold clothes store by himself, since Itachi said he would be waiting in the outskirts of the town for him so they could leave. Oh it's Yukichiki-sama. Said the young girl which only made Naruto raise an eyebrow while asking how do you know my name. What? You mean you don't know you're in all the morning newspapers and on the front page too. Said the girl, with a shock as she quickly handed Naruto a newspaper with a big picture of him in color on the front page, with an article at the bottom that he started reading in his head. The noble Kachiki clan from Whirlpool country that was thought to have been eradicated along with Whirlpool 50 years ago by some unknown event, has a recently discovered surviving member whose name is Naruto Kachiki and is about 5 years old, from what he looks like in the picture given to us by an anonymous tip-off. Which means that this kid isn't only the heir to a lost clan that was said to possess a bloodline stronger than any other, but it also makes him nobility, and not to mention rich from all the money he inherits from his clan, but that's unfortunately all we know about mysterious Kachiki heir. It looks like my clan's name is going to become famous again quicker than I thought, said Naruto with a small smile. Anyway Kachiki-sama, your order is done along with your older friends, but you still need to pay for it please, and since the chakra absorbing silk you asked us to make your outfits out of, makes your order cost extra, since it's very hard to find and very expensive, said the girl, as she handed Naruto the six identical outfits he ordered wrapped up in a paper bag as well as Itachi's outfits. Even though it's expensive it's worth it, since the silk will become as hard as steel when I add chakra to it, making it harder for weapons to actually cut me during a battle so anyway how much will it cost? asked Naruto at the end. It will cost $60,898 for yours and your older friend's order, said the girl with a smile. Well Naruto just pulled out his checkbook and started writing while saying nice things cost a lot, with a sigh as he handed the check to the girl while asking where is your changing room, when she told him where he went in and changed into one of his new outfits. When Naruto came out, he threw away the old orange jumpsuit and looked in he mirror on his right, he saw that he was now wearing a silk sky blue kimono top that matched his eyes with a black trim, matching SAMURAI or Soul Reapers from Bleach, style pants with a black silk sash tied around his waist, and on his back was a pink fox in a sitting position with red eyes that just seemed to glow, and above the fox's head was the kanji for Saku Kitsune, which Itachi recommended saying that that was what the Anbu and Kanoha were calling him along with the Hokage, as well as his sword being over his back with the handle over his right shoulder. You really look like a clan heir and noble now Kachiki-sama, said the young girl, before she went back into the back of the shop. Naruto couldn't help but smile a little at that while he left to meet up with Itachi. Twenty minutes later at the outskirts of town. So are you ready Naruto because this is where our journey truly begins, said Itachi after Naruto gave him his clothes from the shop. Hi I'm ready, and after Naruto said that him and Itachi started walking off during the sunset. Four years later, Naruto is 9 and Itachi is 17. Your training under me Naruto is now complete for I have nothing left to teach you, but that doesn't mean you have nothing left to learn considering you're at a low Jounin level, which is still impressive seeing as I was at a mid to high Chunin when I was 9, but you seem to have surpassed me in strength when I was your age, which means you're progressing even faster than I have, said Itachi, who was taller than he used to be about 5'8 or 5'9, but besides his height, he didn't really look any different. 
so I suppose you're going to go and become a member of that Akatsuki organization you told me about, so you can find out why they want me and the other Biju, said Naruto, who also didn't look much different besides being a little more muscular, and he was also about 4'3 or 4'4 and wearing the same outfit he bought when he was 5. Hi that is correct I need to know who they are, how strong they are, and what they are going to do so we will be better prepared for when they decide to strike at you and before they do that I will leave their organization and join you. But before I go today is your ninth birthday, so I got you this, said Itachi, while handing Naruto a package, the latest leaf bingo book, said Naruto after he opened it while smirking. I thought it would keep you busy, but don't go after someone you're not sure you can handle, since I won't be there to protect you if you get into trouble, oh, and take those weights off because they can't do anything else for you, and wearing them will only be a hindrance, said Itachi, as he kneeled down and gave Naruto a hug, and when he let go he stood back up and said well see each other again before you know it, with a lone tear falling from his right eye before he vanished using his incredible speed. Goodbye big brother, said Naruto, as he shed silent tears because he was sad about being alone again, because Itachi was the only one was truly close to, and now he was gone for who how long. What am I going to do now, said Naruto, quietly as he removed the weights that weighed 600 pounds per leg and 400 pounds per arm, making 2000 pounds altogether for the first time during the last four years, and put them inside a pocket on the inside of his kimono top. It feels good to finally have them off huh my son, said Kashina. Yes it does Kasan, answered Naruto. Naruto, I have decided that you are finally ready to master your spiritual pressure and start learning secret Kachiki clan techniques. It's about time, said Naruto, as he started walking off to a more secluded section of a forest to practice. As Naruto entered a field in the middle of the forest, he started drawing Sanban Sakura and activated his Sakugan, which now had three blue tome which let him see things in slow motion, give his body the ability to keep up with his eyes, let him see chakra points, and let him see what his opponent's going to do before they do it. Now Naruto release Sanban Sakura with the absolute maximum of your spiritual pressure, and be aware that the more spiritual pressure you release the stronger you become, and the stronger the pressure in the area becomes. So be careful to not flatten yourself into a pancake son, said Kashina. Naruto just nodded as he put his sword in front of his face while saying, scatter Sanban Sakura, and as he said that he felt the intoxicating power of the Kachiki clan flow through him and increase his strength to high jaun or low anbu, but that's when he felt his spiritual pressure come to life at its strongest, and it made his breathing ragged, and he struggled to stay standing, and the only reason he still could was because of the weights his brother gave him, along with the intense training he went through, and as he let Sanban Sakura go back to normal, the pressure dissipated, and he stood there leaning on his sword for support. I remember you telling me that you could master this power in a short six months, so do you think you still can, said Kashina while smirking. It feels good to use this power again, and yes I can, said Naruto, with nothing but determination in his voice. You know what Naruto, if you can master spiritual pressure within four months, I'll start teaching you the advanced techniques of our clan, known as Demon Magicker Hado and Kido, said Kashina while emphasizing the four. It's a deal then, said Naruto while smirking. Six months later, so I did master spiritual pressure in the four months, and I learned three high-level Hado and Kido to a degree where I don't even need the incantation, said Naruto, while smirking and walking through a road that would lead him out off Earth Country and into Fire Country, where he would spending the next year, that is until a squad of four stone Anbu intercepted him. Hey kid, are you Naruto Kachiki? Called out one of the Anbu. What's it to you, said Naruto, in his unemotional Itachi-like voice and face. Well we have orders from the Tsuchikage to bring you back to the village hidden in the stones, so you can start a clan there so kid what do you say, said the Anbu in a smug voice. I say that it seems I've finally found a couple of idiots to test my skills on, said Naruto, while activating his Sakugan and drawing his sword, while putting it in front of his face. For that little comment we won't bring you back unscathed, said the Anbu. As he rushed Naruto and the others just sat back and watched thinking there wouldn't need help to dealing with a little kid. Foolish now scatters in Banzakura, and once Naruto said that the sword broke into a thousand pink shards resembling cherry blossoms, as he released three quarters of his spiritual pressure, for now on it will be SP, which was enough to flatten a Midchunin, but would only cause any one of a higher level some difficulty. As the Anbu captain saw what happened he had a horrified expression as the cherry petals cut through him, leaving him as nothing more than a dying blood-covered heap of flesh, and after that the blossoms formed a dog-sized fox with red eyes that was looking at the Anbu with eyes that wanted their blood. You shouldn't forget about me, said Naruto. As he appeared behind one of the Anbu with his pointer finger and middle finger, were extended while touching his shoulder, and that's when he said Hado number 4 by Akuri, white lighting, and after he said that a bolt of white lightning shot from his fingers, putting a 2 inch in diameter hole through his shoulder, and after that the Anbu jumped about 3 meters away from Naruto, trying to put some distance in between them, while grabbing his shoulder with his hand. Hey. Why don't you get over here and help me? He shouted to the other Anbu. 
I'm kind of busy. Yelled the other Anbu as he just dodged a Blossom Fox's lunge. So it's just you and me I hope you prove more of a challenge than your dead captain, said Naruto, while smirking and getting into a stance that was in between the gentle fist and iron fist. You bastard. Yelled out the Anbu as he rushed Naruto. You fool, only idiots rush and blindly, said Naruto, as he readied himself to strike his opponent's heart and end it quickly. When the Anbu came into range Naruto struck his heart with deadly speed and accuracy, but then the Anbu turned into a mud clone, and the real one appeared behind Naruto, while thrusting a kunai in his stomach while smirking behind his mask. But that smirk quickly turned into a horrified expression as he heard Naruto say great clone explosion, with a smirk before the Naruto clone blew up sending the now dead body of the stone Anbu somewhere. Will this thing ever quit? Yelled out the last surviving Anbu as he held his shredded and bleeding shoulder caused by the Blossom Fox after it bit him there, and right when the fox looked like it was going to finish him off it disappeared into thin air. That's when he noticed Naruto sheathing his sword with his eyes back to normal. Tell your Tsuchikage that Naruto Kachiki the Saku Kitsune refuses his offer, said Naruto, as he walked past the stunned Anbu, well thinking this little stunt should get me put into the bingo book, giving me a better reputation in the ninja world, with a smirk. A week later, Okajama, the new bingo book has something that you should find very interesting in the Tsuchigakura criminal section, said Inu, while appearing in the Hokage's office and handing this month's new bingo book to the Hokage. Let's have a look then, said the Hokage, as he flipped to the first page of Tsuchigakura's criminal section, and that's when his pipe fell out of his mouth as he saw a boy that was no older than 9 or 10 as an S-ranked criminal of Tsuchigakura, and as he read on he saw that it was Naruto Kachiki the boy that he remembered from the newspapers four and a half years ago, but what really caught his attention was that the information on him said he killed an Anbu captain with one attack and then another Anbu without even being harmed and let the third one go for some unknown reason and that he had some kind of strange dejutsu and was able to make a dog-sized fox out of razor-sharp cherry blossoms. And as he read on to what the kid's nickname was he dropped the book and said with wide eyes, this is the Saku Kitsune. This kid's the talk of the Chunin, Jounin, and Anbu Sir, said Inu. This child is a no older than 10, and he's already marked as an S-ranked criminal. It's just insane for a child so young to possess so much strength, said the Hokage. Just imagine how strong he'll be in a few more years sir, said Inu. At that the Hokage just sighed while saying Inu the resignation from the Anbu you set me has been accepted, so as of tomorrow you're a Jounin, said said the Hokage with another sigh. Thank you Hokage-sama, said Inu as he took off his dog mask, revealing silver gravity defying spiky hair, leaf headband covering his right eye, and a navy blue cloth mask starting from his neck to halfway past his nose. You're dismissed Kakashi, said the third, as Kakashi bowed slightly and disappeared in a cloud smoke. After Kakashi left the Hokage couldn't help but look out his window while saying when will you come back to the Leaf Naruto and just how strong will you be when you return. With a sigh. End. Chapter 5, Arrival of the Vampire Girl. Thanks for the review's last chapter. Now here's Chapter 5 of Return of the Kachiki Clan. Demon Suman speaking, person thinking flashback. Chapter 5 Arrival of the Vampire Girl. In a dark underground cave two figures sat at two opposite ends of a long plain oak table, with the only light source being a lone candle in the center of the table, which didn't even give enough light off to see the two mysterious faces of the people, leaving only two pairs of eyes visible, one pair with strange rings surrounding his pupil and the other with pink eyes and four blue tomes surrounding a normal black pupil. It seems your nephew Naruto Kachiki grows stronger and stronger with each passing day Grimjo sama said the male figure with rings in his eye. Yes I know, he is quite impressive isn't he, exactly what I'd expect of a 7th generation member of my clan Pain San, answered the newly named Grimjo with an unseen smirk. So what should we do about him then? Said the newly named Pain. We will leave him be for now, for I wish to see how strong he can become, said Grimjo with his unseen smirk still on his face. Understood Grimjo sama, but before I go do you have any orders for me to give to Akatsuki? Asked Pain before he got up from his chair. No, you can go, said Grimjo as he turned around in his chair, and after hearing his subordinate leave the room he said, we will meet face to face soon nephew, and after he said that the lone candle in the middle of the table went out, letting darkness consume the room. It has been six months since the Anbu incident in Earth Country for Naruto, which made him better known in the ninja world like he predicted. He also became more adapt to using Sanbonsakura as well as finally gaining the last tome of his Sakugan, which let him see things at an even slower rate, which finally made him ready to learn the Kachiki clan's flash step technique which his mother started teaching him about a month ago, and it wouldn't be until another few months before he could master the technique that supposedly gave the Kachiki clan members godlike speed. The day was also October 10, his 10th birthday, and he was walking around Tanizuka town depressed, since this would be his first time being alone on his birthday since his brother left one year ago. 
what should I do today, I know since I'm going back to the leaf village in 2 years, I should have someone start building a house for me in the leaf, so I have somewhere nice to live, said Naruto as he started walking to a construction agency. So kid, half now and the other half when the house is finished, said a large man with muscles you could only get from years of heavy lifting as a construction worker. Deal, but just remember that you have to finish it in two years, said Naruto as he gave the man a check for two and a half million dollars. No problem kid, just leave it to me and my crew, said the man. Naruto just nodded as a response before he left and started walking to find something else to do. As he was walking in the street he couldn't help but notice a beautiful pink-haired and green-eyed girl pass him, but he just shook his head and kept walking. Stop, now turn around, said the voice coming from the rosario on the pink-haired girl's chest. What is it? Said the girl as she looked at the red glowing rosario. That young boy you just passed, follow him, said the voice from the rosario. But why should I? Said the pink-haired girl with a pout. Don't ask questions, just do as I tell you. Said the voice, while becoming slightly agitated with the girl's questioning. Fine, said the pink-haired girl with a sigh as she jumped on a roof and started following Naruto. Naruto's eyebrow was twitching furiously, since the same pink-haired girl from before has been following him for the last hour around the park, and whenever he turned around, he saw her run behind some tree, while giving off a slight squeak of surprise. Naruto could tell that the girl wasn't a threat, but it was getting really annoying having some strange girl follow him, so he finally said could you please just come out and tell me what it is you want. Sorry about following you, said the girl while appearing behind Naruto, which just made his eyes widen with disbelief, while thinking how the hell did this girl get behind me, without me noticing. As Naruto turned around, he had to admit that he was a little intimidated by this girl, while he was thinking holy shit this girl's got to be at least 6'1", I mean I'm about 4'5", and she looks like she's 2 feet taller than me. And most of the girls I normally see are only around 5'7 and 5'9". She's definitely the tallest girl I've ever seen but also the cutest where the hell did that come from? After Naruto shook his head of his thoughts he heard Mocha saying. My name's Akashi Yamoka, what's yours, said the newly named Mocha with a smile, as she bent down and was only a few inches from Naruto's face, which made him start to turn bright red from embarrassment. My name's Naruto KK Kachiki, said Naruto, with a slight stutter. Mocha this is the boy we've been looking for, I can tell because of the small demonic aura surrounding him is the same as the one we saw 5 years ago, so stay with him and get to know him better, said the voice from the Rosario. But how am I supposed to do that? Said Mocha with a sigh, which only made Naruto raise an eyebrow at her sudden strange question. Figure it out yourself, said the voice, before it stopped talking completely which only made Mocha sigh again. Um excuse me Mokasan, but is there anything wrong, said Naruto, with some blood dripping from his nose, since he just accidentally looked down her shirt. That's when he noticed that Mocha was even closer, and she was smelling the blood dripping from his nose, and that's when she said sorry Naruto, but fox demon blood and human blood are a vampire's favorite, said Mocha, before she bit Naruto on the neck and started sucking his blood. Why can't I move? And what does she mean she is a vampire? thought Naruto frantically, as he tried to get away from the girl that was sucking his blood, but thought one more thing she smells like cherry blossoms. Outskirts of town, I've finally found you Naruto Kachiki, and now I can kill you and take your place as the next Kaiubi, said a man with amber slighted eyes, long silver hair, razor sharp claws, pointed ears, five silver dog-like tails waving behind him, and wearing a white kimono top with matching samurai-style pants. Back with Naruto, thanks for the meal Naruto-kun said Mocha, as she finally released Naruto and stood back up while smiling, it was good that the park was empty today, her people would have probably been watching them. All Naruto could do after that was look at where she bit him, and he noticed that there was no bite mark, but it did look like she gave him a hickey, and that made him turn crimson again from the idea of such a beautiful girl doing something like that to him. Um anyway how did you know I was a fox demon, and what do you mean you're a vampire? Asked Naruto. Mocha just looked down before she took a seat on the nearest park bench, with Naruto following and sitting down next to her, but before they could talk a strange man with seven silver tails came out of from the trees. Hello, my name is Ryuk, and I am the five-tailed dog, and I have come to kill you Naruto Kachiki, and take your place as the next Kaiubi, said Ryuk. Mocha-san please gets behind something, because this is going to get messy, said Naruto, as he stood up from the bench and drew some Bonsakura and activated his Sakugan, and in the blink of an eye, he appeared behind Ryuk and slashed at his back, but as he looked up he noticed with wide eyes that his attack didn't even go through this guy's shirt. Well you're a fast little bugger I'll give you that, but you're nowhere near strong enough to pierce my skin with that sword of yours yet, said Ryuk as he turned around smirking, and even quicker than Naruto's Sakugan could track he punched Naruto in the stomach, knocking so much air out of his lungs he couldn't even scream as he went flying through half a mile worth of trees, and when he finally stopped was when he hit a boulder and put spider web cracks into it before he fell face first on the forest floor with blank eyes. 
Am I punched him too hard, now I have to walk all the way over there to finish him off, said Ryuk with a sigh. All Mocha could do during this was watch with a horrified expression and tears in her eyes as this boy who was supposed to become her first friend was about to be killed by the fifth strongest Biju. You fool. Hurry to him and tell him to remove the Rosario so I can save him. Yelled the voice from the Rosario. But no one can remove the Rosario. Answered Mocha. If he is the one we are destined to be with, like I think he is then he will be. Now go. Said the voice in an angry tone. Mocha just nodded with a determined face as she took off to where Naruto and Ryuk were having their one-sided fight, with Ryuk being the one who was toying with Naruto. Not dead yet are you, because I haven't even had any fun yet, said Ryuk with a grin, at about 40 yards away from Naruto, but getting closer with each step. As Naruto stood back up on wobbly legs using his sword for support, he heard Kaiubi talking to him. Well kid, all I can say is that you are totally fucked, since you can't even run your only hope is for some miracle to happen, said Kaiubi while shrugging. All Naruto could after that was let his eyebrow twitch furiously, well saying why don't you tell me your name then. You still aren't strong enough to hear my name kid, and besides it wouldn't do you much good in the condition you're in, said Kaiubi with a sigh. Fine then, I'll make my own miracle, said Naruto as he stood straight up with ragged breathing, because two of his ribs punctured his right lung, while at least four others were broken. So you can actually stand, I'm quite impressed even though that punch was only a quarter of the strength of one of my normal punches, said Ryuk smirking. You son of a bitch, let's see how you like this, said Naruto as he pointed towards Ryuk with his right arm stretched out and his pointer and middle fingers pointing towards him as he said. Akuto 61. Six bars of light. What the hell is this? Said Ryuk, while struggling to get free of the strange six bars of yellow light that appeared around him in a circle and restrained him. This is my only chance, I have to gather all of my remaining energy into one attack, and it might at least harm him giving me and Mocha San time to escape, thought Naruto, as he held his palm up towards Ryuk. Now eat this, you pathetic excuse of a biju, Hato 33. Blue fire, crash down. Shouted Naruto, as he put all his remaining SP, remember, SP means spiritual pressure, into that last attack, and let out a massive wave blue fire. Damn, this is going to sting, said Ryuk with a sigh, before the fire hit him and created a large explosion. I have to hurry or I'll end up being too late, whispered Mocha, as she saw the explosion not too far away. Bam kid, that actually hurt a little, said Ryuk, as the dust cleared and made him visible again, while showing the few scorch marks on his clothes, but besides that he wasn't even phased by Naruto's attack. What am I supposed to do now, I have nothing left, said Naruto, in between deep breaths while he leaned on his sword for support. Thanks for the entertainment kid, but it's about time I ended this, said Ryuk smugly, as he stood over Naruto, with his claws ready to take his head off. So this is how it ends, thought Naruto, as he closed his eyes and waited for the inevitable. Die. Said Ryuk, as he slashed at air. What the fuck? Where did the kid go? Yelled Ryuk, and as he turned his head to the right he saw Naruto being cradled in that pink-haired girl's lap he saw earlier. Mocha-san why didn't you run away when you had the chance? Said Naruto, as he looked at Mocha sitting above him. Because you're my first friend and I don't want to lose you, said Mocha, with tears staining the sides of her eyes. Friend huh, I've never had one, my older brother would be the closest thing that I've ever had to a friend, but he left a year ago, leaving me all alone, just like I was for the first five years of my life, said Naruto in a quiet voice with a few silent tears falling from his eyes. We could be each other's first friends Naruto-kun, said Mocha. You would be friend Mocha-san, said Naruto, while looking at Mocha with disbelieving eyes. Of course Naruto-kun, said Mocha while smiling down at Naruto's disbelieving face. So sorry to interrupt this little sentimental moment, but I really got to kill the kid little girl, so you can either stay there and die with him, or since I'm feeling nice today I let you move and live, said Ryuk as he approached them. No, I won't let you kill Naruto. Screamed Mocha as she tried to shield Naruto with her body. Mocha-san move. Screamed Naruto as he tried to push her off of him, but instead he accidentally pulled the Rosario on her chest off. He removed the Rosario thought Mocha, with disbelief. Then you can die together. Screamed out Ryuk, but before he could slash them to pieces an ominous demonic aura that started coming from Mocha pushed him back, and when he looked up, he saw Mocha standing up in the middle of a tower of a pinkish violet chakra, while holding Naruto bridal style. And when the chakra dissipated he couldn't help but shake in fear, because of the demonic aura she was releasing was so powerful that he could honestly say it rivaled the former Kaiubi. Her demonic aura was so powerful it even turned the blue sky crimson, the clouds black, and it even forced the moon to replace the sun, while making it glow crimson like the now crimson colored sky. When Ryuk finally got a better look at her, he also noticed that she now had silver hair, crimson eyes with black slighted pupils, pointed ears, razor sharp claws, large sea cup chest instead of a small sea cup like before, and a more serious expression that made her look more mature than before. 
I'll deal with this trash now Naruto, said Mocha in a slightly deeper yet still feminine voice, as she laid him gently onto the grass. Leaf Village, wh what's going on Hokage-sama? Asked a random Chunin as he and the Hokage were outside along with the whole Leaf Village, as well as the rest of the elemental countries, while looking at the now crimson-colored sky, black clouds, and the shining crimson moon that somehow replaced the sun, but what really frightened people was the powerful demonic aura that could be felt in the air. I have no idea, said the Hokage, as his pipe fell out of his mouth. But Itachi, hey Itachi why are you using Tsukiyomi on me? Asked a blue fish faced looking man. I'm not Kisum, but it does seem strange for the sky to change so drastically in such a short amount of time, stated Itachi, before they kept walking. Back to Naruto and Mocha. Ryuk, you will not be leaving this place alive, said Mocha. I finally know what you are, yo you're a va vampire, a legendary and ancient demon rumored to be born in darkness and considered to be the pinnacle of demonic power that supposedly made even the nine Biju look inferior, except for the eight-tailed and nine-tailed, said Ryuk, well gaining back a little of his resolve. You are correct, and I am also the last of my kind, now prepare yourself Ryuk, the five-tailed dog, said Mocha, as she vanished from his line of vision. When Mocha appeared again, she punched Ryuk in the face, creating a shock wave caused by her power, and ended up sending Ryuk flying through the trees, but his flight was suddenly stopped as Mocha appeared behind while putting her knee up. Ryuk let out a howl of pain as his back collided with Mocha's knee, and after that she put her leg back down, letting Ryuk fall to the ground. Is this all the mighty Gopi has to offer, Mocha said, while smirking down at Ryuk. You bitch. Ryuk yelled as he got up and tried to punch this unstoppable goddess of the night. Why can't I punch you? Ryuk shouted in between punches as Mocha just kept dodging and weaving around his punches and kicks gracefully for the last couple of minutes. Is this really the same Mocha sent from before? Said Naruto as he watched a battle from the sidelines and had light blush on his face while he watched Mocha fight. Someone has a crush on Mocha San Neri-chan, said Kashina in a sing-song voice. Will you please shut up Kasan, said Naruto, and before Kashina could reply back Kaiubi cut in sounding extremely serious Naruto, that girl out there is a vampire, a legendary and ancient demon that was said to be born from darkness and known as gods and goddesses of the night during ancient times, though they were thought to have become extinct half a millennia ago, so I thought you should know what you're getting yourself into if you do fall for this girl. I could care less if she is some ancient and powerful demon, because the only thing that matters is she said she would be my friend, and she's fighting that creature that tried to kill me right now in order to protect me, said Naruto. Just remember that if you get involved with this girl you will be playing with fire, and if you don't be careful you will get burned, said Kaiubi, before he receded back into the confines of Naruto's mind. I'll deal with whatever happens to come along, said Naruto. Why are you so much stronger? Screamed out Ryuk as he was just punched through a tree and was breathing erratically while looking beaten and bruised all over, while Mocha just stood over him without even a scratch on her or even breathing hard. I am tired of this waste of time, so now it's time to finish this, know your place, said Mocha as she focused her demonic chakra into her hand, making it denser and denser until it was at its releasing point. All Ryuk could do was look on in horror as she created a ball of highly condensed demonic chakra that would be enough to kill even him, that's when he noticed with some relief that she stopped the attack and started talking. I will let you live if you spread the word among the demons that Naruto Kachiki, the prince of all demons, is now protected by the last vampire, said Mocha, with her eyes narrowed. Company considers it do done, stuttered out Ryuk, before he vanished from sight. Now to check up on Naruto, said Mocha, as she started walking over to him. When Naruto saw Mocha walking over to him he sheathed his sword and began limping over towards her because he was still banged up from before, even with his impressive healing factor. You look different Mocha-san, said Naruto, as he was standing in front of her and couldn't help but feel intimidated by her new appearance and even more so by the overwhelmingly powerful demonic aura that was surrounding her. Mocha just smirked down at him while kneeling to meet him eye to eye, while also repressing her power, since she could see Naruto was actually shaking a little, and once she stopped the flow of her power, the sky and clouds went back to normal, as well as the sun came back out. You know most people would run away from me and not walk towards me, said Mocha, while looking him in the eyes. Why would I run away from my only friend? Said Naruto while smiling a little and staring at her captivating crimson slighted eyes, before he fell into unconsciousness because of his injuries. Mocha just caught him while he fell and picked him up with his arms around her neck and his head resting on her shoulder as she walked to the spot where the Rosario was before picking it up and putting it in a pocket on her vest while thinking I feel like staying out for a while, after that she disappeared into the trees while carrying Naruto with her. The closest village with a good medical facility is in Kanoha, so I should take Naruto there so he can get healed up quicker, said Mocha, but before she could go she heard Naruto whisper not Kanoha. Then where am I supposed to take you, Mocha said, with a frown, and that's when she heard, Tsunade-sama you can't bet the last of our money. 
Maybe we don't have to go to Konoha after all, said Mocha, while smirking from remembering that the supposedly most skilled medic ninja was named Tsunade, and she had a gambling problem, and as Mocha disappeared from view while heading back towards Tenazuka town, where she heard the scream, a long spiky silver-haired man with red triangles painted under his eyes, stepped out from behind a tree. That was one hell of a fight, I mean damn the five-tailed dog got his ass kicked by that strange girl. Man if I got here sooner I would have been able to see the beginning. But anyway, Saratobi sensei is probably going to want to hear about what I saw, said Jiraiya, before he started heading towards Konoha. While on his way he couldn't help but start thinking. I wonder who that girl is or rather what she is, and also who was that boy, I couldn't get a good look at him because the girl was in the way, with that last thought Jiraiya let out a sigh. After all he only arrived there and started watching the fight after Mocha transformed. As Mocha carried Naruto through Tenzaku town trying to find Tsunade, she noticed a lot of people were staring at her more so the male population while they thought that's the hottest girl I've ever seen. Where could you beat Tsunade, said Mocha, as she wandered around the city as the sun went down a few hours ago, until she heard. Tsunade Sama you already won so don't push your luck. Oh come on Shizun, I'm on a winning streak. I would hardly call one win a winning streak Tsunade Sama. And you, said Mocha with a smirk, as she walked into a casino to her right. Excuse me are you Tsunade, said Mocha, while looking at a blonde-haired woman with brown eyes, green kimono top, beige pants, and a D-cup chest. I am, but I'm kind of busy here, said Tsunade, while playing poker and not even looking at Mocha who was standing behind her. As a response Mocha just did an axe kick to the table making it break in half and everything on it to fall on the floor and scatter everywhere in a big mess. Tsunade just turned red with anger after that while turning around and sending one of her super-powered punches to the girl behind her, while thinking I could've won, and this bitch ruins it. But what happened next shocked Tsunade and the young 20-something-year-old girl, with short black hair, brown eyes, average bust, and a black battle kimono who was standing beside her with a briefcase and a small pig. As Mocha saw Tsunade try to punch she just caught the punch like it was nothing special. Now that your card game is over I need you to help the boy that I'm holding, said Mocha, while looking Tsunade in the eyes. Tsunade who was finally getting over her shock yelled back, why should I help you after you ruined my game? Because this child is Naruto Kachiki, and I'm sure he can pay generously for your help, answered Mocha as she was still looking Tsunade in the eyes, and Tsunade was starting to get crept out by those crimson slighted eyes that were staring at her, because they reminded her of the Kai Ubi, but then Tsunade's mind registered that he can pay generously statement. So how generously are we talking here? Asked Tsunade while forgetting her previous anger. Very generously, answered Mocha while smirking. Shizun come on we're going to a hotel for the night. Shouted Tsunade as she left the casino with Shizun and Mocha following. So put the kid on the bed I'll check him out, said Tsunade, as they went inside the two-bed hotel room, and Mocha did as asked. This kid's got four broken ribs, and two of them are piercing his right lung, but they appear to be healing at an extraordinary rate in fact all the kid needs is a good night's sleep, and he will be healed by morning, he doesn't even need my help, said Tsunade smirking, while thinking, betting paid for doing nothing I love it. So anyway since there's only two beds you're going to have to sleep with the kid and me and Shizun will take that bed, said Tsunade. I understand, said Mocha, as she took the Rosario from her pocket and put it back on, and as he did that Tsunade and Shizun watched in fascination as her hair turned pink, her claws became normal fingernails, her eyes changed to green with normal pupils, and her chest turned back into a small C cup. What the hell just happened to you? Screamed out Tsunade and Shizun at the same time with wide eyes. Um well you see this Rosario um holds my other personality in check, said Mocha with a less serious face and a little higher pitched voice than before, while trying to find a way not to tell them that she's actually a vampire and the Rosario is a seal that holds back the vampire version of herself. So you have some kind of other version of yourself that the seal there holds back, um is it some kind of bloodline ability? Asked Shizun. Mocha just nodded her head furiously, while saying it definitely is a bloodline ability. That's one strange bloodline, but whatever I'm tired, so good night, said Tsunade while shutting off the lights as she and Shizun laid down and went to sleep. As Mocha laid down in the bed she couldn't help but blush a little at sleeping in the same bed as Naruto, but she just shook her head while pulling Naruto closer and using him like a teddy bear, before she said good night Naruto-kun, and went to sleep herself. End chapter. Chapter 6, Arrival of the Snow Woman. So, that ominous demonic ori yesterday was created by a young red-eyed and silver-haired girl that fraught the gobi, and one without even breaking a sweat, is that what you're trying to tell me Jiraiya? Asked the Hokage, as he smoked on his pipe and leaned back in his chair. Yup, that's about what happened, what about this young boy you said you saw? Well like I said, I didn't get a good look so I can't really give you a good description Suratobi sensei said Jiraiya with a sigh. Then I want you to keep a close eye on these two, and when you find out their identity come and tell me, now dismissed, and as the Hokage dismissed Jiraiya, he disappeared while heading off to find the two people he saw yesterday.
Is it really okay to just leave Naruto-kun? Asked Mocha, as she and Naruto left before Tsunade and Shizune woke up. They also left without paying Tsunade like the other Mocha said they would, and Naruto just opted for leaving a letter that explained why he wasn't going to pay her. Yes it is Al right Mocha-san, because since she didn't help me she gets no money, answered Naruto as Mocha just nodded while they walked out of the city and headed for water country. Flashback, where am I? Well wherever I am, they sure have soft pillows, said Naruto drowsily, as he woke up and started snuggling into the pillows more. That's when he noticed that the pillows smelled like mocha. Why do these smell familiar? Said Naruto as he finally opened his eyes all the way and backed up a little, and when he was far enough to get a better look, he saw that he was sleeping in the same bed as mocha, and what he thought were pillows was actually her chest, and that's when he tried to get up as quickly as he could, but when he tried he noticed that mocha's arms were wrapped around him and holding him firmly in place. I guess I might as well wake her up and get some answers about what happened yesterday, said Naruto with a sigh, as he started shaking Mocha gently on the shoulder to wake her up. Mocha-san Mocha-san, it's time to wake up, said Naruto as he shook her lightly. What? said Mocha drowsily. It's 8 a.m. Mocha-san, and I would like you to tell me what happened yesterday, said Naruto, in a quiet voice, while still lying down on his side with only about a foot in between him and Mocha. Mocha just nodded while letting go of Naruto and sitting up. So, what was with that other version of you and how did we get here? Asked Naruto, while sitting up as well. Well Naruto-kun I'm a vampire, and this Rosario is a seal that keeps my true powers in check, as well as the other version of me, said Mocha, while pointing to the Rosario on her chest. So that's why you changed and kicked Raik's ass when I took off that Rosario, said Naruto. Yup, but the other version of me is completely different person, we're basically two different people sharing the same body, said Mocha. I see, so how did we get here? Well after Ryuk was defeated, I took you to Tsunade-san because I thought she could help, but she refused, so I told her you could pay her, and that's when she changed her mind, but she didn't help you at all, she only said that your healing abilities would heal you by morning. In that case we're leaving now before they wake up, so I don't have to pay her, since all she did was absolutely nothing, said Naruto as he wrote a quick note and tapped it onto Tsunade's head. Um, okay Naruto-kun, but just give me five minutes, said Mocha, as she went into the bathroom. Then flash back, Naruto Kachiki, I'll get you for not paying me. Yelled Tsunade from her hotel room. It seems Tsunade-san found my note, said Naruto smirking, while Mocha just looked back at the hotel that the yell came from. Why are we going to Water Country Naruto-kun? Water Country has the least populated areas, so it is unlikely that I will be disturbed while I train to achieve Bankai or the second release of my sword, and during this time I will also be laying lower hiding, so Hunter Ninja and Bounty Hunters can't find me and disturb me, and that is why I wish to stay in Water Country for the next two years and train, and I would like you to come with me, answered Naruto, while giving her a quick glance. Of course I'll come with you Naruto-kun. Said Mocha while smiling but Naruto-kun I haven't had any breakfast yet so, sorry, said Mocha, as she kneeled down and wrapped her arms around Naruto's neck while biting him on the neck and sucking his blood. I can't believe I'm actually starting to enjoy this thought Naruto, with a light blush on his face, while well, he just stood there with his head tilted to the right while he let Mocha suck his blood. Two weeks later, Naruto and Mocha just arrived in water country and were gradually becoming closer to each other as time passed. Mocha-san, it seems we have a visitor, so why don't you come out now, said Naruto as he stopped walking and turned around with Mocha doing the same. You really do live up to your reputation Saku Kitsune, said a spiky silver-haired man. You're a one of the legendary Sanin, what do you want, said Naruto in his normal Itachi-like voice and face. This kid's not ordinary, and why does he resemble Itachi Ichiha so much, thought Jiraiya. I will ask you one more time, what do you want, said Naruto. Not much, but I would like to know if you are the real Naruto Uzumaki. Yes I am, and I will be returning to the leaf within two years to take my clone's place, now if that is all I will be going, said Naruto, as he and Mocha were about to leave. Wait, I have one more question, said Jiraiya, while making Naruto stop. What is it? Were you a part of the Ichiha massacre? Asked Jiraiya with narrowed eyes. Yes, I and my brother Itachi caused the Ichiha massacre because the clan was planning to take over the leaf village by killing the Hokage, except for Ichiha Mikoto and Sasuke Ichiha. They didn't know about the plan, and that is why they were spared. So that's why it happened, in that case you and Itachi should be praised as heroes, but we both know that's not going to happen, but I can probably get Siratobi sensei to take you of the bingo book, while well, having him state that it was a mistake about you killing the clan, and you didn't really do anything, so you won't be jumped when you come back to the leaf village, but as for Itachi, he's going to still have to take the blame, and what do you mean by my brother? Said Jiraiya. I mean that I and Itachi have the same mother, and it's not Makoto Ichiha, also thank you for taking me out of the bingo book, it will make things easier when I return to the leaf village, said Naruto, as he and Mocha started walking again. 
I guess that's why he looks so much like Itachi, not to mention the resemblance in personality, way to minute Kashina slept with Yugaku Uchiha. Screamed Jiraiya before he disappeared, while heading off to tell the Hokage. Um Naruto-kun it's getting late, and I was wondering if you would um like to go to dinner with me, said Mocha while looking the other way. Haven't we been eating dinner together for the last two weeks? Said Naruto, as he just kept walking. I thought that this could be more of a date-like dinner, said Mocha. No offense Mocha-san, but aren't you a little too old for me? Questioned Naruto, in his calm voice. At that statement Mocha stopped walking and put her head down while a little dark cloud hovered over her. I'm just kidding Mocha-san, I know that you won't age any more than you are now. Which is just like how I will stop aging once I hit 18 or 21, so yes, I would like to go on a real date with you, said Naruto, as he turned around to face Mocha with a small smile on his face. At hearing what he said, Mocha couldn't help but have a happy smile on her face as she ran up to Naruto and picked him up in a bone-crushing hug. Mocha-san, could you please put me down I can't breathe, said Naruto, as he turned blue. Sorry Naruto-kun, I didn't mean to hurt you, said Mocha apologetically, while putting Naruto down. Don't worry about it Mocha-san, said Naruto as they started walking again in silence. It seems we're finally here, said Naruto, as they arrived at a nice medium-sized cottage that was hidden in the forest, with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, one kitchen, one living room, and it was about a mile from the village hidden in the mist. It's wonderful Naruto-kun! exclaimed Mocha excitedly. I'm glad you like it, because we will be spending the next two years here, said Naruto, while walking into the medium-sized cottage with Mocha following behind. So Naruto-kun, when are we going to go out on our date? Asked Mocha, while taking a seat on the living room coach. Well it is 6.30 now, so we might as well get going and get supplies, said Naruto as he headed for the door. We just get here and now we have to go back out again, but at least this we are going on a date, said Mocha while blushing a little. As they arrived in the mist village Mocha was looking around excitedly at all stores and restaurants. Where would you like to go Mocha-san? Asked Naruto, as they walked around the mist village while sun started to set. How about there? She said, while pointing to restaurant that looked to be the nicest in the area. Very well Mocha-san. As they walked into the restaurant, they noticed that it was defiantly meant for only the higher class. What an honor it is to have a noble like you in my restaurant Kachiki-sama, said a man to Naruto's right that looked to be the owner of the restaurant. It seems I am known even in the mist village, thought Naruto. I am here on a date, said Naruto, while looking at Mocha. He must have a thing for older women, thought the owner before he said I see, but she needs to be in something more formal for my restaurant, but we do have brand new kimonos in the back that she could wear, if you don't mind buying one for her that is. She can have anything she picks, said Naruto as Mocha was taken to the back to pick a kimono. So how do I look Naruto-kun? Asked Mocha, while smiling as she did a quick twirl in her new form-fitting emerald kimono with pink lining. You look amazing Mocha-san, said Naruto, as he looked at her while smiling and blushing a little. I had a lot of fun on our date Naruto-kun, said Mocha, while still wearing the kimono and holding her other clothes in a bag as they walked back to their home. I did to Mocha-san, said Naruto, as they went in their home, and before Naruto could go oh his room Mocha bent down in front of him, while giving him a quick kiss on the cheek before hurrying to her room. Naruto just stood there for a moment while smirking with a small blush on his face, before he went to his room to go to sleep as well. When Naruto woke up the next day he noticed that, one there was an older girl in his bed, two she wasn't Mocha, and three she was staring at him with only an inch between them. Who the fuck is this? Yelled Naruto in his mind, but on the outside he had his normal calm and cool attitude. Um excuse me but who are you, and why are you in my bed, said Naruto, while looking at a girl with purplish blue hair about six inches past her shoulders, light blue eyes with a darker blue in place of where her pupils should be, a lollipop in her mouth, a white sweater with blue sleeves, a light brown miniskirt like mocha, mid-thigh length socks with a purple and dark purple pattern, medium C cup, and about 5'10 or 5'11. My name is Mizur Shirayuki, and you're even cuter in person Naruto-kun, said Mizur with bored type of expression. Um thank you, but how do you even know me, and why are you here? Asked Naruto. I've seen you in the newspaper a few times, and I noticed that you have the same sad and lonely eyes I do, so why don't we go to the lake Naruto-kun, said Mizur, while getting off the bed and pulling Naruto along with her. Wait a minute. Can you at least let me change first? Said Naruto as he was dragged of his bed. After Naruto said that, Mizur just stood there while staring at him. Could I have some privacy please? Said Naruto, and after that Mizur just walked out of the room and into the living room. Mocha was in the kitchen having cereal while wearing her usual oversized t-shirt that she sleeps in, and in happy mood like usual that is until she saw a strange girl come out of Naruto's room and yelled out who are you and why were you in Naruto-kun's room, how did you even get into his room? I'm Mizur Shirayuki, I was in Naruto-kun's room because I wanted to be, and I snuck in, said Mizur with a lazy expression, while taking the lollipop out of her mouth and then putting it back in when she finished talking. 
Loka just started to get a little red with anger because of this strange girl was acting as if what she did was no big deal. So you're up to Moka-san, well since you're up would you like to go to the lake with me and Mr. san Asked Naruto as he came out of his room. I would love to Naruto-kun. Said Moka while grabbing Naruto's hand and glaring daggers at Mizer after she ran into her room and changed. Mizer just glared at her as well, while silently accepting Moka's challenge by latching her hand with Naruto's as well, while they started dragging Naruto to the lake and glaring at each other the whole way there. She's acting to flirty with Naruto, thought Moka with a tick on her forehead as she sat down on the grass while watching Naruto and Mizer skip rocks on the lake. Did you see that Naruto-kun? It skipped nine times, said Mizer as she hugged Naruto from that back while resting her head on top of his, while all Naruto could do was sigh before he said Mizer-san, I really need to get started with my training. Why don't you just stay here with me Naruto? Or is it just because you don't want to stay here with me, said Mizer while holding Naruto a little tighter. She's too close, thought Mocha, while getting madder. That's not it, it's just, before Naruto could finish, he felt a cold sensation around his stomach, and as he looked down his eyes widened in shock as a layer of ice coming from Mizer's hand started to cover his stomach. What are you doing to me? Asked Naruto, while looking at her with narrowed eyes as he tried to get out of her grip, but found that she was just holding him too tight. If you're frozen in a block of ice you will never be able to leave, said Mizer, as the ice started to cover him quicker. You fool. You are so engrossed with your own thoughts you don't even notice what's happening to Naruto, said the voice from the Rosario, and as Mocha heard that she looked up to see that Naruto's stomach and half his chest was covered in a thick layer of ice, and as she saw that she started running towards him to help. Why are you doing this? Asked Naruto, while looking at Mizer standing in front of him. Because I'm lonely, and if I freeze you you will be only mine. Said Mizer with a brief pause. Get away from Naruto. Yelled out Mocha as she pushed Mizer into the lake, but before Mizer fell in the lake turned to ice, so as she fell on it, she just got back up, and as she did her hair turned to ice, and hands turned into larger claw-like ice hands. I am a snow woman type demon, and I can freely control ice, said Mizer as she fired a couple ice-like daggers towards Mocha. As Naruto saw the daggers flying towards Mocha he broke out of the ice surrounding him and tackled her to the ground, but as he did that he ended pulling the Rosario on her chest off, and as he did that he noticed that the blue sky turned crimson, clouds turned black, the crimson shining moon replaced the sun, and the familiar yet overwhelming demonic aura covered the area. Get off me Naruto, said the eerie voice of the silver-haired and crimson-eyed Mocha with slits for pupils. But that said, Naruto noticed that he was straddling Mocha's waist and quickly got off before she got any angrier. So you're the reason I was called out huh, said Mocha as she approached Mizer. Stay out of my way, said Mizer, as she shot more ice shards at Mocha, but she just disappeared. Know your place, said Mocha as she appeared behind Mizer and kicked her in the back, making her fly through only two thick trees since she held back. So are you going to stay for a while Mocha-san, or are you going back inside the Rosario? Asked Naruto, as he put the unconscious Mizer over his right shoulder. I think I'll stay out for a while, said Mocha, as she suppressed her demonic aura while she walked past Naruto and headed for the house. Naruto just sighed before he started following Mocha home as well. So Naruto I want you to let me out twice a week, said Mocha, while Naruto put Mizer on his bed. So you want me to let you out once a week so you can stay out for two days, then let the other Mocha come back for five days, said Naruto. Correct, repeated Mocha. So what do you want to do then Mocha-san, considering Mizer-san won't be up for at least an hour. How about we have a spar, and you can call me Mocha-chan if you want, said Mocha with a light blush as she walked out the door, Naruto just followed her with a light blush of his own, at the idea of calling Mocha something so friendly. One hour later, you're stronger than I expected Naruto, said Mocha, as she walked in the house without even any dirt on her clothes after the spar. Thanks, said Naruto, as he walked in after her looking as if he just got the shit kicked out of him. So you're finally back, said Mizer, as she appeared behind Naruto. She defiantly knows how to make a surprising entrance thought Naruto, before turning around and saying Mizer san you're finally up. Hi, and I wanted to know if you could forgive for trying to freeze you it's just that I'm so lonely and I don't want to be anymore, so could I stay here with you Naruto-kun, asked Mizer as she looked at Naruto hopefully. I forgive you and of course you can stay, said Naruto. Thank you Naruto-kun, said Mizer while smiling. One year and a half later, I've finally learned how to manifest Ka-san into the real world, which means the real training for Bankai can finally begin, said Naruto, as he laid down in the field that he was training in. Well done Naruto-kun, said Mizer, as she and Mocha, pink-haired Mocha, came out from behind a tree. So what are you two doing here, said Naruto with his eyes closed. We wanted to talk to you about our relationship, said Mocha while looking the other way and fidgeting a little. What about it, I mean the three of us are good friends, said Naruto, while finally opening up his eyes. We want to be more than just friends Naruto, said Mizer. I can't pick between the two of you, so I don't know what you expect me to do, said Naruto while frowning a little. 
we already knew that, and that's why we've been discussing the idea of sharing you, and we have agreed that that would be our best option, and since we've known each other for a year and a half, it makes sharing you a little more bearable, said Mocha with a sigh. If that is what the two of you really want then I'll agree, but only if the other Mocha has agreed to this arrangement as well, said Naruto while still lying down. She did agree, but it took a lot coaxing, and she isn't happy with our arrangement, but she agreed nonetheless, said Mizer, while appearing on the left side of Naruto, while lying down as well. The way she always just appears somewhere is a mystery that even I can't figure out, thought Naruto with a sigh, as he felt Mocha lay down next to him on his right. So what are we supposed to do now, we've already been going out on dates with each other and talking with each other over the past year and a half. The only things we haven't done yet that couples do is kiss and other intimate things, said Naruto with his eyes closed again. I think we can fix that, said Mizer, as she and Mocha moved closer to Naruto and kissed him on the lips at the same time. Naruto's eyes flew open in shock as he looked at Mizer kissing the left side of his lips and Mocha kissing him on the right, so all he did was put an arm around each of their backs while closing his eyes and smirking while he thought got to love my life. As Mocha and Mizer kissed Naruto, they couldn't help but try to shove each other off so one of them could have him all to themselves, because even though they agreed to share him that didn't mean they wouldn't fight with each other for his affection from time to time or not get jealous of each other sometimes, since they weren't particularly happy with sharing him, but they knew he would never pick between them, so they just had to learn to live with sharing him. Six months later, I can't believe two years have passed already, but at least I've finally mastered Sanbonsakura's Bankai form, but I still haven't heard Kai Ubi's true name yet, thought Naruto, as he, Mocha, and Mizer walked to Tanizuka town to meet the group of leaf ninja that are supposed to escort them to the leaf village. Naruto was now about 5 or 5 one with the same type of clothes, except they were black, and he wore a white robe with a kanji for Saku Kitsune on the back with a pink fox under it that had red eyes. Flashback, two days ago, Okajama this letter has been personally addressed to you, said the Hokage's secretary, as she handed him a letter and walked out of the room after. So you have finally decided to come back Naruto, said the Hokage as he read the letter, but as he read on he couldn't help but drop the letter on his desk and start laughing, because the end of the letter said Hokage-sama, I have forgotten the exact location of the leaf village, so I would like to request that you send me a ninja team to escort me to the leaf, send the team to Tanizuka town and tell them to meet me in the Raymond stand, located on the far western side of the town. Consider this an A-class mission just in case some ninja come after me looking to take the bounty on me that the stone village put on my head, seeing as I've finally come out of hiding. Have the team leave the day you get this letter, and I'll pay the price of the mission when I get there. As the Hokage's laughter finally died down he said I can't believe you forgot where the village is. Aya, please send in Mido guy's team, I have a mission for them, said the Hokage to his secretary. Of course Hokage-sama, answered Kaya. About 20 minutes later the Hokage's door burst open, revealing Mido Gai and his Genin team. Okage-sama what youthful mission do you have for us today? Screamed a tall man wearing a green jumpsuit, orange leg warmers, big bushy eyebrows, and black hair and a bowl cut. Yash, what is the youthful mission? Screamed out mini version of Mido Gai. Yes well hello Gai and Lee, said the Hokage as he looked at the larger one and then smaller one. Hello Hokage-sama, said a young brown-haired girl with her hair in the shape of two buns, wearing a pink Chinese-style shirt and green cargo pants. Hello Tenten, said the Hokage. Good morning sir, said a boy with pupil-less lavender eyes, mid-shoulder-length black hair, wearing black shorts and a beige shirt. Good morning to you too Niji, said the Hokage. Now, your mission is an A-ranked escort mission, you will meet the client in Tanizuka town in the Raymond stand on the far western side of town, two days from now, and before I forget your client is Naruto Kachiki, said the Hokage, before dismissing them. Then flashback, looks like we are finally here Naruto-kun, said Mizer, as she and Mocha wrapped their arms around each of Naruto's as they arrived in Tanizuka town. I know that both of you are nervous about going to the leaf village and being around so many humans, but don't worry because I will protect you, since there is nothing more important to me than you too, said Naruto, as he gave them one of his rare warm smiles that was only reserved for them. That kinder side of you is one of the reasons why we fell in love with you Naruto-kun, said Mocha while smiling at him as she and Mizer held onto him a little more firmly. And I fell in love with you too because you were my first real friends besides my older brother, so anyway, it's finally time to start our new lives in the leaf village, said Naruto, as the three of them walked into Tanizuka town while preparing to meet their leaf ninja escorts. And Chapter 7, Returning to the Leaf Village. This is starting to become ridiculous, we've been waiting here for the leaf ninja for the past three hours, said Naruto, as he sat in the Raymond bar with his eyebrow twitching. East side Raymond bar, I thought I told you too that the client is in the far west side Raymond bar and not the far east one. Said Nichi, with his eyebrow twitching as he faced Lee and Guy sensei To the west side Raymond bar Lee. Screamed out Guy. Yosh, Guy sensei Screamed out Lee with a salute as he and Guy ran to their new destination. 
Isn't West the other way, Niji? Asked Tenton, with her eyebrow twitching. Yes, yes it is Tenton, growled out Niji as he began clenching his fists in anger and frustration. West sighed Raymond Barr, must not kill Leaf Ninja, chanted Naruto, over and over again, as his hand was inching to the sword over his right shoulder. It's okay Naruto-kun, just calm down, said Mocha, as she picked Naruto up and put him in her lap while putting her head on top of his and one arm around his waist to hold him there while she began stroking his whiskers since she knew that that was the best way to calm him down. Mocha-chan you know how much I hate it when you treat me like a child, said Naruto, but before he could say anything else that incredible sensation he would get when anyone touched his whiskers kicked in and all he could do was close his eyes and lean back into Mocha's chest as he started to purr lightly. I didn't know that that would happen to Naruto-kun if you pet his whiskers, said Mizer, as she stared at Naruto curiously. I only found out by accident about two months ago, said Mocha, as she sat there quietly while enjoying the moment. That is until she noticed that Naruto disappeared, and when she turned her head to the left, she saw that Mizer stole Naruto from her and was doing the same thing to him as she was doing a moment ago. Mizer, give Naruto-kun back. Mocha yelled out as she tried to take Naruto back. Be quiet or you'll wake him up, said Mizer in her normal bored tone of voice as she stopped Mocha from taking him away. As Mocha looked at Naruto, she saw that he really was sleeping and she couldn't help but smile a little as she ran her hand through the side of Naruto's hair before she said, when Naruto comes sleeping like this, he really does look like a child, it makes me feel weird whenever I see him like this because I always realize that I'm together with someone so much younger than me, it really makes me feel like some kind of pedophile. We are demons Mocha, so age doesn't really matter to us seeing as we stop aging once we hit 18 or 21, said Mizer, as she just kept stroking Naruto's whiskers. I guess you're right, said Mocha, and that's when Mocha and Mizer heard young Naruto Kachiki, we are your youthful leaf ninja escorts. Screamed the voice of Guy as he walked into the small Raymond restaurant. And I was just starting to become relaxed, said Naruto as he opened his eyes and got off Mizer's lap, while Mizer just frowned a little at Naruto, because she was also starting to enjoy having Naruto sit on her lap. It's about time you ninja showed up, said Naruto, while he walked in front of Guy and looked at the group, he could only think he has no sense of fashion, and neither does his little clone, but at least the other two are fine. As the three genin saw Naruto they all thought back to what their sensei told them at the gates of the leaf village. Flashback, now I want all of you to understand that this is an air rank mission, which means we will probably run into enemy ninja, and if we do just remember our objective is to protect Naruto Kachiki, well we escort him to the leaf village from Tanizuka town, which should take two days to get there and two days to bring him back making this a short four day mission, understood? Said Guy, to his genin. I sensei, why would someone like Naruto Kachiki need our help, considering he is supposed to be some prodigy among prodigies, said Niji. Because Niji, he was marked down as an S-ranked criminal of the Stone Village at the age of nine and a half for killing an Anbu captain and his teammate while letting the third member go for some unknown reason, which means people are looking for him in order to collect the large bounty that the Stone Village put on his head, said Guy seriously as he looked at the stunned faces of his genin. If this Naruto person is truly as strong as you say Guy-sensei, then I wish to defeat him and prove hard work can beat a prodigy. Declared Lee. You will never be able to beat someone like Naruto Kachiki Lee, because he is like me a true prodigy, said Niji, as he began to walk off with the rest off the team, while Tenten and Guy frowned a little at what Niji said to Lee. As Lee started to walk with them he thought I will show you Niji that someone like me, someone that has to work hard for his strength, can beat a prodigy like you or this Naruto Kachiki. And flashback, Naruto Kachiki, I am Rock Lee, and I wish to fight you said Lee, as walked up to Naruto. But before he could finish what he was saying Naruto interrupted. I have no interest in fighting you Lee-san, because you are not worth the time, said Naruto, while looking at Lee. But why? Protested Lee. If you really want to fight me so badly the Chunin exams will be in Konoha in six months and during that time I will fight you. But not any sooner, said Naruto while looking at Lee. I accept your challenge Naruto Kachiki. Yelled Lee with a salute. Shall we get going then, considering that it is getting late, said Niji. Then let us get going my youthful students and client. Yelled out Guy as he headed for the door. It's time to go Mizer-chan and Mocha-chan, said Naruto, while looking at the only two people he cares about besides his big brother for now at least. As Mizer and Mocha started walking over Tenten couldn't help but ask are they your sisters Naruto-san. No they are my girlfriends, said Naruto, before walking out of the Raymond bar with Mizer and Mocha following him. He has two girlfriends. Screamed out Tenten in surprise, before saying why are all the good-looking rich guys always taken, with her head down and a sad expression. Tenten, are you coming, said Niji, while popping her head through the open door. Yes, said Tenten with a fallen expression as she headed for the door. It has been a day and a half since Naruto and the others left Anazuka town, and they were only about four hours away from the leaf village, which would make them arrive there at about 8pm. 
During the trip no one really talked much, even Lee and Guy were quiet because them Tenten and Niji were a little nervous about being around Naruto, Mocha, and Mizer because they all got some strange gut feeling that there was something inhuman about the three of them. Um so, how long have you known Naruto-san Mocha-san, said Tenten, hoping to finally break this awkward silence. I and Mizer chan have known Naruto-kun for the past two years, said Mocha while looking at Tenten as they walked to Konoha. Wow, that's pretty long. But how long have you and Mizer been going out with him? Asked Tenten curiously, and that's when she felt a cold chill run up her spine, making her turn around to see the cause of it, and that's when she saw Mizer behind her, making Tenten squeak a little in surprise, while thinking how the hell did she get behind me, I mean I just saw her a good 4 meters ahead of me. We've been together for 6 months now, but in that time we've only kissed him once as well as him only saying that he loves us once, which was a day and a half ago in Tanizuka town, said Mizer while looking at Tenten. That's true, Naruto-kun has been pretty distant with us over the last two years, but I think it's only because I and Mizer kind of rushed him into a relationship with the two of us, and he really didn't know what to do in a relationship with us, considering he was only 11 at the time, said Mocha with a set expression. But you forget that Naruto-kun has been opening up to us more over the last couple of weeks, considering he's been telling us about his life before he met us, and also telling us what his big brother was like, said Mizer while looking at Mocha. I haven't even really noticed that, you think he's finally starting to become closer to us Mizer-chan? Asked Mocha excitedly, considering she just realized that Naruto really has been getting closer to them and opening up more, and Mizer just nodded in confirmation to her question. Wait a minute, you both look like you're at least 17, and you're saying you practically forced an 11-year-old kid into a relationship with you. What are you a couple of pedophiles? Screamed out Tenten. We are not pedophiles. Screamed out both Mocha and Mizer, with an embarrassed blush on their faces. But their conversation was put to a halt when they saw four stone ninja come out of the forest about 25 or 30 feet away. Naruto Kachiki, so you've finally come out of hiding after two years, said a ninja, with a stone headband coming out of the forest, on the left side of the dirt road with three others. With seeing that, Guy and his team jumped in front of Naruto and the two girls. If you leaf ninja can please move out of the way and let us kill the kid behind you, you won't have to worry about dying today, said the same rock ninja. You three just stay behind me and my team, we'll take care of this. Now, Lee, Tenten, and Niji I want you three to take the two Chunin on the right, and I'll take the two Jounin on the left, now go. Shouted out Guy, and they all dashed off to their targets. So you want to fight then fine. Shouted the same stone ninja, as his group charged forward, Lee Hurricane. Shouted Guy as he appeared in the middle of the two stone Jounin, and catching one of them in the face. With Lee's group, Lee, you take the one on the left and Tenten you're our long range support, said Niji before they dispersed while going after their designated targets. With Niji, so I'm facing a brat huh, well this shouldn't take long, said the stone Chunin smugly. It would be in your best interest to not underestimate me, said Niji, while activating his Byakugan and getting into the Gentile fist style stance, while Tenten hid in a tree, planning to act as long range support for Niji and Lee. Great mud slide jutsu, shouted the ninja, as the ground under Niji turned into mud and started pushing him back. Damn it. Growled out Niji as he lost his balance and saw the stone ninja coming at him with a kunai in hand until the kunai came flying out of nowhere and hit the stone ninja in the head, courtesy of Tenten. Mud clone, thought Niji as he seen the stone ninja turn to mud while jumping out of the mud slide jutsu and onto normal ground. Using his byakugan he saw the ninja was under him and waited for the right time to jump out of the way. Now, thought Niji, as he jumped out of the way of the ninja's headhunter jutsu. So you're a little better than I expected, but don't start getting cocky kid because the real battle is starting now, said the stone ninja, after getting out of the ground and looking as if he was finally getting serious. With Lee, why do I always get the freaks? Thought the stone ninja, as he looked Lee over. If you do not wish to start then I will. Said Lee as he charged his opponent and hit him in the face with a right hook which sent the stone ninja tumbling a few yards to the left. You surprised me with that speed of yours kid, but you won't get another lucky shot like that and again, growled out the ninja as he got up and wiped the blood of his lip. We shall see, said Lee while getting into the iron fist stance. With Guy, I already took care of one of the Jounin by punching them in the chest and causing the ninja's ribs to pierce his own lung and heart. You bastard, earth style earth dragon bomb. Shouted the Jounin, and after going through the proper hand seals a dragon head made of dirt came out of the ground and started shooting earth bombs at Guy, but he was too fast and dodged them while running towards the stone ninja. Damn it, how is he so fast? Thought the ninja, as he frantically dodged Guy's punches, but each one was getting closer until Guy grabbed him while jumping into the air, and he started spiraling to the ground, and right before impact, Guy shouted out primary lotus. Now that that's taken care of, let's see if my students need any help, said Guy, as he walked away from the small crater-sized hole caused by the impact of his attack. With Niji, you little brat. 
shouted the stone ninja, because Niji just sent a powerful Juakin strike to his arm which disabled it. Tenten now shouted Niji, and on ride on Q Tenten threw a barrage of shuriken and kunai towards the stone ninja, and by the time he turned around it was too late, and he was falling to the ground with kunai and shuriken in his back. With Lee, looks like I got you now kid, said the stone ninja as he just caught Lee in some kind of quicksand type jutsu. As long as I can still breathe, this fight is not over, proclaimed Lee, that's when he put all the chakra he could into his legs and jumped out of the quicksand. Now let's finish this, said Lee, as he disappeared and reappeared in front of the ninja, while attacking him with a barrage of punches and kicks, until he jumped away from the stone ninja, which only confused the stone ninja, until he looked down and saw the explosive tag on his chest, and before he could remove it, it blew up. Now to go find the others, said Lee, before dashing off. As expected of my youthful students, said Guy, as he looked at his reassembled team. They were not even a challenge Guy sensei, said Lee with a salute. I was hopping for more of a challenge, said Niji. I expected them to be a little stronger too, said Tenten. I suggest we don't look a gift horse in the mouth and just keep going before something else happens, said Guy. And here I was hoping to see some of my nephew's skill, but those idiots just had to get in the way, and after I went through all the trouble of telling the stone ninja where Naruto would be, and even coming all the way out here just to see him fight, said Grimjo, while looking at Naruto from a distance and hiding in the shadows of a tree. I can see you, said Naruto just barely over a whisper as he looked in the direction Grimjo was. If this kid can even detect me from such a distance, then Zetsu wouldn't even have a chance in hell with spying on him successfully, thought Grimjo with a smirk before he disappeared. Is there something wrong Naruto-kun, asked Mizer. No, nothing's wrong, said Naruto, as he turned around and faced Mizer. Hey. Mizer-san, Mocha-san and Naruto-san we should start moving before we get any more unwelcome guests, called out Guy, which Naruto just nodded and stated walking again with Mizer and Mocha following. But as Naruto was walking he couldn't help but think why are you watching me, who are you, and why does your chakra fell similar to mine? We have completed our mission successfully, Yash, said Lee as they entered the north gate of the Leaf Village. I assume you're going to be alright from here Naruto-san, asked Guy. Yes, I will be fine, said Naruto. Come on my youthful students, for we must report to the Hokage with our successful mission. Shouted Guy. Yash, Guy-sensei. Said Lee with his signature salute as they both ran off to the Hokage's office. Since your sensei has run off I'll just give this to you, said Naruto, while handing Niji an envelope with the money for the mission in it. I also have something for you Naruto-san, said Niji as he put the envelope in his pocket and took out a different one and handed it to Naruto. Goodbye Naruto-san, Mocha-san, and Mizer-san, said Tenten before she and Niji took off running in hopes of catching up to Lee and Guy. So after seven years I'm finally back at the beginning of the tale, said Naruto with a smirk as he read the letter Niji gave him. What's the letter say Naruto-kun, asked Mocha as she and Mizer looked over his shoulder. It's a letter from the Hokage, stating that he has already taken care of telling everyone that knew my clone that it was a fake and that I'm the real Naruto, and the sensei of my clone's class has also told the students about it being fake and that they will meet me tomorrow during team formations, so that old monkey took care of what could have been a big hassle for me, said Naruto with a smirk. Don't you have to dismiss your clone Naruto-kun, asked Mizer. Mizer chan my clone and myself can never come within a 50 mile radius of each other or it will dismiss automatically and since i've obviously come within a 50 mile radius of my clone it has already dismissed itself said naruto so what should we do now asked mocha well considering it's about 8 pm or 9 pm we should just go home and get some sleep just where do we live naruto kun said mizer i have a feeling you're both going to love where we live said naruto smirking while he started walking away Mizer and Mocha just looked at each other and shrugged before following like they normally would. When they got there Mizer was so surprised her lollipop fell out of her mouth and Mocha was just gapping with wide eyes. They were looking at a huge estate the size of the Hyuga estate or maybe even a little bigger. It had lots of cherry trees in the front yard and two stone fox statues on opposite sides of the walkway. So, do you two like it, asked Naruto while still smirking. The two girls just nodded dumbly as they followed Naruto into their new estate-sized home. So which rooms would the two of you like, said Naruto while sitting on his king-size bed in the master bedroom. Well I and Mizer thought we could share if that is what you want, then it's fine. Good, said Mizer, as she came into the room wearing a light blue nightgown and got into bed on Naruto's left. I guess we should change too, said Naruto as he left room. When he came back he was wearing a t-shirt and boxers and he saw that Mocha was also wearing a white version of Mizer's nightgown. Well good night Mocha-chan and Mizer-chan, said Naruto, before he fell asleep in between the two of them. Good night Naruto-kun, said both girls as they wrapped an arm around him and went to sleep as well. But the Hokage. So guy, what do you think of him, asked the Hokage while sitting behind his desk. Well I can't really say much considering he never really talked. 
But I can say that that boy is dangerous, said Guy as seriously as possible. How is he dangerous Guy, asked the Hokage, with a raised eyebrow. Whenever I looked at the kid's eyes I saw that they held a commanding and piercing gaze, but if you look beyond that you can see that the kid has it in him to kill anyone that gets in his way, except for the two girls with him, because I noticed that he always looked at them with a softer gaze, but still all in all I personally think that he has the same look in his eyes as Itachi, and I don't think our village can handle a second Itachi sir, said Guy. You have to remember Guy that Naruto hasn't been around to many people besides those two girls you told me about, just give him some time, and I'm sure he'll soften up a little and make friends, said the Hokage. If you say so sir, said Guy with a doubtful expression. It was 8am at the Ninja Academy, and Aruka just got into class. So students, today is the day that you will be placed on your genin teams, said Aruka, who wore a normal chunin outfit with a scar across his nose. Sensei, what about that whole Naruto thing you told us yesterday, said the lazy Shikamaranara who had pineapple-style hair, mesh shirt with a grey open shirt over it, dark brown shorts, and common blue ninja sandals. I almost forgot about that Shikamaru, so like I was saying yesterday the Naruto that you have all known for the last seven years was a fake, and you will be meeting the real Naruto Kachiki any moment now, said Aruka with a set expression, because he really got attached to the fake Naruto, and finding out that it was a fake really brought down his mood, but he was still interested in meeting the real Naruto and becoming friends with him, like how he was friends with the clone. Wait a minute do you mean the Naruto Kachiki, the kid that was marked as an S-ranked criminal of the Stone Village at only nine and half? Screamed out Sakura Haruno in shock, she was a pink-haired girl with a red dress that had cuts on the side, a white circle on the back, and on the sleeves, she also wore tight short black bicker shorts. But Sakura just said caught the attention of most of the class, and especially one Sasuke Chiha who started to think if he's that strong maybe he can teach me something. Yes Sakura, that Naruto Kachiki, said Aruka, but stopped short as he heard a knock on the door. That must be him now, so everyone I would like introduce the famous Naruto Kachiki, said Aruka as he opened the door revealing Naruto. He looks like Itachi, whispered Sasuke with wide eyes as he looked at Naruto. And what if Naruto reincarnation of Byakuya and Bleach? Thanks for watching my video till the end if you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.